Oi, oi. Flat Earth British, Martin Litka speaking. Double flat thumbs to infinity thrice forever. It's awesome to see you. I'm super duper buzzing. I am literally buzzing my ass off. Perception is perception is high tonight. The vibration is high. And I can certainly feel the presence of the almighty. Things are going to be very fantastic in this post, guys, okay? Um, I'm going to give you ways of thinking that you've never had before. In fact, no, nobody knows what I'm about to share with you all now. At first, um, my eyes were rolling and I was thinking it just can't be. And then when I show you what I'm going to show you tonight, guys, you will all see that is this is a thing. Okay, this is a mind-blowing whole new field of inquiry for us all. Okay, guys, it's super duper exciting. I could barely wait to bring it to you. So awesome, awesome. So please make sure to share this show out before you get started. Okay, this is going to be different. Okay, if you're new to Flat Earth British, I guess you're going to be in for a bit of a shock. I'm going to take you on a roller coaster ride of emotions. You will feel everything in this. You will feel love, which is always the best one. <laughs> you will feel love. You will feel. Um, creeped out okay i do that too okay but you will have a good laugh while you're here the vibration will be high and as i said it's a very goose pimply time for myself so i'm guessing some of you might be on that buzz with me so it's a lot to share this is going to be what you call a bumper show there's going to be a lot in this post the time will go quick okay so get comfortable and allow me to do the driving Okay, we're going to have a fantastic time, guys. Trust. Okay. Martin is going to take you on an incredible journey of discovery and new ways of thinking. Okay. Them old synapses in your Brian. Okay. If they have been rusty and sick of urine, maybe echo chambers, <laughs> they will be blasted through today with fresh juiciness and new ways of thinking. Okay. As you can see in the title, oh my God. Um, I got literally cursed for being a blasphemer for saying that. I didn't think that was a blasphemic thing. Beware. And the Phoenicians, be tech. Now, I'm really into bees. About two years ago, I'll show you some footage in a minute. I went into beekeeping because I knew even then that, you know, there was something deeper going on with the bumblebees. I was interested in the way that they had the structure of their society. And then I realized when I was doing it, because it, it was only two years ago, three years ago, um, that this was the same structure as what they practice here today in this realm. Yeah. Queens, worker bees, all the rest. So then I um, was getting onto the vibrational qualities because there are about vibrational uh, qualities to bumblebees, uh, healing properties. When you work with bumblebees they literally hum around you buzz and it gives you when you leave after beekeeping you feel fantastic you literally feel uh, uh, euphoric it's like drugs just to be around bumblebees okay they are fantastic uh, but i was also interested in um, their anti-gravity technologies as in they're physically unable to you know they're defying physics they're physically unable uh, to fly because of their minute wings and their massive bodies. And they're using or harnessing, like many insects, including spiders, they're using static. They're using electromagnetics to stay in the air. More than that, the bees have dis been disappearing. And there was an idea a few years ago, or maybe even into recent days, that they were fucking off to another dimension and getting out of this one. Now, the bees are boss. Without the bees, we are all dead. Could it be conceivable that the bosses are, are the bees? You know, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the true rulers and lords of Earth were the mice? In the book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, could there be something similar along them lines happening here? Hmm? Well, I tell you what, the elite 100% definitely think so. And I think they've taken technologies from said bumblebee releasing some ideas and answers to what we've been wondering about in the past, especially around the uh, maybe 16th and 17th century when there was a lot of lace involved. We're going to look into lace, um, arsenic and old lace, 
um, I'm going to discover some stuff that you probably didn't know, which is going to blow your minds. Um, later on in this post, we're going to be looking into the freakiest photographs that I've yet come across in my life. Okay, They're not even a horror film. These are real. <laughs> and they are the spookiest pictures ever of post-mortem pics. And what we're going to wonder is people don't do that today, do they? They don't like, can I have my photograph taken with my dead minging mother, do they? Because that would be fucking weird. But 100 years ago or 150 years ago, it was no problem whatsoever in a reset period to have your photograph taken with apparently a dead relative. There's something going on with that. I can assure you of that. We'll look at that a little bit later. <clears throat> okay. I am the captain of my soul. Me. And I have manifested a better world. And I discovered how. I have manifested what I need rather than what I want. Hmm. And it's bearing fruits. Because I want, I want, I want is not what you need. What you need is what you need. There's more important message with that, guys. Um, we're going to look into some mud flood later. Um, some unbelievable, mind-blowing uh, footage that I'm going to show you a video uh, concerning Mercury. And um, we're going to talk about the fact that it's not really dangerous. I've had loads of Mercury. I had the stuff in my mouth for years and I've played with it. I've swallowed a bit. You know, I've had a lot of Mercury in my life. And um, the manners and maglev technology i'm going to show you how simple it is and how they really are doing a mag maglev technology um using uh, mercury in the modern day um on youtube and um, yet they have the plans for the manners and they're telling you that they can't get this shit together no so we're going to look into that a little bit later guys that's going to be mind-blowing too um mud flood london we're going to look into electrical stones stones that release an electrical charge and i'm not even joking blow your mind to think that if buildings are built at this electrical charge with the um circuit board cities that's going to make a lot of a lot of sense also the technologies that i'm going to release on you right now tonight um b tech is also um, very synonymous with circuit board cities and this being an energy source uh, we're going to look into India a bit later. Some incredible ceilings. We have looked at some before, but I want to put forward some ideas for these incredible temple vaulted ceilings and Indian art. Okay, some strange Indian art. Everything with Phoenicians, mermaids, giants. Um, and it gets down to all sorts of pervy acts on um, these bas reliefs on Indian temples. It's not really religious, what you think. We'll have a look at all that later. We're going to look into some Antiquitech of Delhi. Um, we're going to look at some Vietnam. We're going to do some word breakdowns. We're going to have images of the day. We're going to have some of my favorite album covers. They won't be too rude. Yes, they will. It's all going to be brilliant fun. Are you ready for that? Hmm? <laughs> we're going to have a fantastic guys day, day guys, today. You're not going to believe how fantastic this is going to be. Okay, let me give you a few of you shouts. Let a few of you wrangle in i want to thank um the new new people who just joined my um my membership that's absolutely fantastic so thank you so much and there's monica and there's three fingers who's in myrtle beach our lovely hippie shake who's welsh it's going to be very interesting hippie shake you're going to be wondering wondering what the hell you just cheered you'll be thinking about this all night as well after you leave my show you'll be thinking about it probably for days the same as I have been, because it is fucking mind-blowing. Fungi King, good to see you, jolly man. JR, Truthness, <laughs> I like that. Red are amazing. Red Mercury, we'll have a look a little bit later. All of that Mercury stuff later on. Ooh, there's Manage, good to see you, my friend. And Little Wing, we love Little Wing. And MT and Joe, ooh, we love Joe. <laughs> Face blue smiling, face blue smiling, face blue smiling, Martage, Martage. Thank you, Joe. Henrik, good to see you, my friend. And Ed and Alex, who's my old broski. Uh, Marie Curie, Mercury. Yeah, exactly, my brother. Definitely, definitely, definitely. For a uh, hundred times. But with the bees, um, so they've left clues all the way and we missed them. I missed them, guys. And now I've caught up. And I'm going to share it with you. And it's my pleasure to be able to share this with you. You wouldn't believe how much it's my pleasure to share this with you. <laughs> because I know 
I know this is one of their big secrets. Okay. Now, I think the Bee Gees, the bands, I think they definitely knew the score of what I'm about to tell you, the Bee Gees, and they're definitely insiders. And what about the Bee Tells? The Bee Tells. Now, I could go on for about 20 minutes giving you bee clues, okay? Like Frisbee. <laughs> they're, like a, they're like a Frisbee, don't they? Frisbee haircut. But we're all busy beavers, aren't we? We're all busy bees working away, and I am literally buzzing like a bee at the moment, and I am as well. So we're going to learn some stuff together, which is always the best part of FEB. Now, I've done a lot of this work this week with my, my cohort. Hi, Adam Cook. Much love, brother. And our, our skies today. There he is. Okay, this fella here. Happy days. It is a wonderful life, Lee. You know, like um, the film, A Wonderful Life? It is. It is. If we fuck them off completely and not even like connect mentally with their bollocks, I can guarantee you, as a community and as a family extended together, we can literally enjoy this life and see it as a wonderful experience that it actually is. It's only their bollocks, guys, that makes it all muddy and dirty. Together, us, we're a beautiful, a beautiful thing, all of us. And beauty is forever, as you know. Happy day. So I'll be working with Lee, Flat Earth British Hub, this week, as we always do, um, discussing back and forth. And this here, as you can see in the description box, is the culmination of myself and Lee Flat Earth British subscriber work of the week and what we uh, what we make of it all. Okay, which is uh, so thankfully as well. Okay, this is him and this is me. He's brilliant to bounce off of because there's not that many people out there would even know anyway the stuff that we know. We've been doing this for so long now. There's just we got a hidden code, hidden language that has just evolved over the years. So that if it was intercepted, no one would know except us. <laughs> it's brilliant. Very, very clever stuff. Rob, good to see you. Romany Bear, my brother, Romanian Bear, Misty World. So it is happy days. It's fantastic. Okay. So don't let them get you down. Keep that vibration high and see how we win. Okay. They don't want you happy. They don't want you healthy. They don't want you buzzing. So guess what? Be happy. Buzz. Be a good person. They don't like that either. They try and corrupt everybody with their bullshit. So we're not good people anymore. Well, we are good people. We're all good people. Okay. Anything that we ever done wrong in our lives was because of them. Because we're not like that. Save the bees indeed. Thanks, Chris, for joining our membership as well. Right. I'm going to get stuck in because there's literally hours and hours. It's four, just short of 400 of you turned up. So that's fantastic. If you would be so kind. Bob, Bob Sykes. Well, we're, they say we've got a hive mind, haven't we? You know, they say this, the internet hive mind, and it very much is. The, the sooner you realize that you're not, you know, that you're not alone and you're not having a solo experience and that is actually, like, um, what's that saying? Um, as soon as, the when the ocean finds out that it's not the, the drop of water finds out that it's not a drop, it's the whole ocean. Well, that, that's what we got here, guys. I'm not alone. And this is a bigger thing happening, much bigger. Be the change. Love that. Love that. See? So any any buzz buzz, any um interesting B comments? Be well. But I'm gonna propose at first that the Phoenicians are in fact bees. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, guys, but we do have bay bees, don't we? Like bay, the Phoenician, the sea, the bay, and we have bees, bay bees. And I'm some of the stuff I'm going to show you now. So even if they're not like, you know, a way of getting out or maybe their souls or maybe, you know, that that's their thing and that's where they went. OK, or well, that's where they are. Um, the elites and the royals definitely think this is the case. And they have made the entire structure of this realm, no matter what country you're in. OK, the hive of the bee. OK, and we are the workers and the drones, they would have it to protect and to work for the queen, the queen bee. Okay. Well, I'm going to share screen. Buckle in. This is going to get weird. Okay. It's going to be fantastic for you. You will enjoy. I promise. So buckle in. And enjoy. And make sure to share this out. Double flat thumbs to infinity fries. Okay. So. Bees, bees, bay bees. Now, there are um, images flying around, and we have seen umpteen alchemical depictions where it seems to be really important 
uh, to the Phoenicians in the alchemical period to be keeping bees. Obviously, there's nectar, which is prime. There's honey, which is really gorgeous, very healthy for you. Um, but buildings, and a lot of the buildings in this place work on the structure of the beehive because it's so strong, because of its uh, shape and its perfect measurement. So what if that was the case? And they have been like, you know, we've we've got like all these different dog heads, pig heads and all these different animals. What if there was a crossover actually with with insectoids? In this case, the very mysterious bee, which defies all physics and disappears somewhere in this realm. Which is a which is a fact. But OK, there they are. They're beautiful. I absolutely adore bees. They're literally cute. Um, when they buzz near you, I'll show you some of the footage of when I was beekeeping. They, like I said, it makes you feel euphoric, but they can turn on this snap of a finger if they don't like your buzz or your energy. OK, they will come at you with this noise, which is like white noise. And the only thing you can do is get the fuck run because it is unbearable. They go from healing and beautiful to ah, get the fuck out of there. This is going to kill me. A noise feels like it will kill you. It's that bad. And they create it. It's I haven't actually heard it, but the, the big I, I heard the start of it, maybe. But the beekeeper said, you don't want to hear that. And I was like, OK, I don't want to hear that. Um, I found my neutral ground looking after bees. Um, I hummed to them and I sung to them and they absolutely adored me. I was fine with bees. So remember, this is one of um, this is Flat Earth British's ethos. It's be kind, be love. Be happy, be real, be you. Now, what we noticed is this. In this period, we've been talking about these horns and these cloves, but we made a discovery. Now, I'm not sure what they're doing with the baby in this image. He's sort of sticking a stick into its ear or something, maybe in vaccinating or something. But it's what I'll draw your attention to is the women's headwear. They are being bees. They have compound ear, eyes for the sides of their ears. They have lace coming over exactly like bees' wings. They are bees. They are not horns. They are wings. Bees' wings on their heads, guys. Want more proof? Okay. Compound eyes, just like the bee. And what I want to talk about is the lace. Now, we've had questions about the lace in Tatarian cloves. There's something going on with it. The layers and layers of lace, the lace bonnet. Is there more going on with the lace? She's got little, little lambs, little lambs, dude. And, of course, there they are, defying gravity because they are electromagnetically levitating, like the spiders do with spider lumen. Um, their wings have the ability to attract the uh, static charge for them to be able to levitate rather than fly, because then wings wouldn't keep it afloat, um, which is what things do, float in the fluid that we're in. Um, but they do interact like antennas with the ether and the electrostatic charge to keep them afloat. OK, many insects do the same. So bear that in mind with the clothing of what I'm going to talk about in a minute. So Phoenicians, fucking bees. Here's Mary and I'm guessing a young baby Jesus. Again, the bee thing going on with the alchemical symbolage. Over doors. Now, I visited um, a fire station in Nottingham with a friend Mel only two, two years, three years ago. And it had bumblebees all around the door in stone. And we were like, well, what's the bumblebees for? And we always see with, with the Masonic symbology, uh, with the definitely with the alchemical symbology and with the Phoenicians, full stop. There's a big emphasis on behaving or beehives. Beehive, behave. Alchemical and medieval depictions of bees. And 
esophaguses or coffins, if you like. Oh, thank you, um, Annie D. Much love to you. That's really sweet of you. Oh, um, our beehives. And yeah, as you can see, the bees on there. The papal hat. How many times do we see this in alchemical de depictions? It's a beehive. They're telling us all along. And I think the crown is even something to do with the beehive. So the papal crown is a beehive. British beehive. The banks at the bottom. It goes up. Companies. And everything in this place just proves it in you is decarpmentalized like NASA and all of the rest. Uh, one man don't know what the other man's doing and everyone's got their job. You've got the smiths, you've got the masons, you've got the bricklayers, the carpenters, the weavers, dairy. And they're all part of the hive system that we're living in. We're bees for them. And they definitely tell you in the alchemical depictions and in the architecture, the Phoenicians with their precious, precious bees. And there's a beehive in an old depiction with a religious chappy. It's a rather big beehive. And if you're, I don't know what that kid's got in his hand. I'm really intrigued about that item. Um, but he's got bees all over him. It's, an, it's a Cherubinowski, so it should be all right. But if you are nice with bees, as I'll show you in a video later, mind-blowing little video, and they won't sting you at all. I was beekeeping right the way through summer of 2020, and I never got one sting. Although I did have the costumes on. It's a lovely little, little depiction here. But they show you what a bee on a mind's eye, or where the mind's eye would be, which I think is definitely a clue. So they're not compound eyes like on a bee, are they? This is just the style that looks exactly like compound eyes and even the antennas of a bee. So that lady is not trying to be a bee then, is she? She even got a honeycomb necklace or, or around her, the honeycomb. And what you find now is once you've recognized this bee tech, Okay, because I'm going to say it's a technology, and I'll show you why in a minute. You're going to see it everywhere. You're going to see it everywhere from now on. It's a code that was there all the while, and we've missed. Okay, Elizabeth and other royals and other dignitaries of the 16th century also do the bee. Okay, these big bee wings. And all of this lace. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is something really interesting, okay, guys, is these ruffles that the men and the women wear around their necks. Okay, you're going to see quite a few of them in this. The beads all pay apart, the silk, but the layers and layers of lace. It's all about the lace. And look at the shape of them as well, like they're going to capture some sort of charge. Now, here's Elizabeth, the first... And with all of the Phoenician stuff going on, again, she's doing the bee. She's Queen Bee. She's going to look like a bee. So I, I was, we've been wondering for the longest time, what is going on with bees? What is it? Is it fashion? What, you know, and then you, if you look closer, you can literally see that there is a layer of lace all the way over this very incredible clothing. It looks a bit daft. It looks a bit like that silly shit that Sam Smith has been wearing. It looks really, really daft. But the pearls, we've already established that they're a technology, haven't we? And we know that crowns, coronas, we know that the jewels, we know that they can all part. You have jewels in a watch, in a computer. Um, there, She is an entire circuitry right there using B tech. Bees, here she is with her B wings open. Now, if you was to use deductive reasoning, the, this is what you would come up with. Bees equal static. Lace equals static. And both equal flight. Is that what I'm saying? Am I saying that this is close for flight? I'm saying it might be. Uh, it would at least make you lighter in a way. And I'm thinking because they're in a fluid, um, less uh, gravity, what you call electromagnetics, not gravity, and more thick fluid um, atmosphere in the past, they would have been able to float around. I can remember 
floating around and it's real uh, guys it's real and i know i can do it and i know i've been doing it okay it's real and i know it is don't care what anyone says i know it is Do you know it's how the pearl is over the mind's eye but anyway the jewels and the ruffles now what they do like look like as well i was thinking what do they look like these ruffles they look like fans they look like oh they look like um air filters that you get in a car engine so ah is that what they're doing as well could they literally be filters air filters they're right next to the heads oh behave oh sorry austin well he knows doesn't he behave this is the um, parliamentary building in new zealand it's called the beehive so the elites 100 percent are doing their ruling country operations from a beehive okay now brace yourselves Arsenic and old lace. Hold the old lace. Arsenic and iron material is a remarkable superconductor. New class of superconductor materials could help reveal the mechanism of superconductivity at higher temperatures. Now, check this out. This is happening now, apparently. So it may not be what Cary Grant had in mind when he discovered his old aunt's recipe for doing away with lonely bachelors in the classic film, Arsenic and Old Lace. Definitely a clue. But superconductors discovered a few months ago by scientists in Japan are displaying remarkable properties that pr present real mysteries to material science. The new class of materials that exhibit superconductivity are relatively high temperatures containing no copper oxygen layers instead they have a rather lace like layers comprised of arsenic and iron oh a great flurry of activity to understand these new superconductors is underway so dig arsenic and old lace is highly conductive and look what they're wearing it's arsenic and old lace so this bee tech apart from it looking exactly like a bee it's got the electromagnetic properties of levitation etc housed within it guys they soak it in arsenic giving it iron properties and it superconductive so this is um where they make the um it's made out of thread thread wires all you have to do is put a bit of, of metal through these wires through this lace in these clothes and you got super super tech clothing and that's what they were doing so this is the production in the lace district of nottingham a place that i walked through and visited it's a massive area of old nottingham that was devoted to the produce of lace lace men big on pills this guy and I even think the studs as well. It's all part. It looks like, literally looks like, uh, like something to do with computers. So again, be like, and uh, it's just, it looks stupid as a fashion statement, but as you know, the fact that it's got probably arsenic in it and it's super conductive, we're looking at a high end technology in this time. It may have even be sustaining life. Remember they were losing hair. Um, they were wearing wigs, they were going bald, they were apparently had all had syphilis, according to the narrative. But there was something deeply wrong. We wondered whether it was radiation poisoning, but something to do with this place. And this clothing protected them, this clothing sustained life. How much lace does she really need? And notice, and you'll be very surprised, brides as well, when they get married, covered in lace. The veil has to be lace over the face funerals black lace over the face it's like a, a mask a screen a tech she's covered in lace that's probably been soaked in arsenic and probably has highly conductive properties and check out the hat of gold and gold leaf and all of the jewels and the lace that goes over her temple this might be making a psychic this might be a communication tech the more i think about it the it's just unlimited potential. Look how she's completely covered with the lace. It's over all of her. 
like shrouding Oliver, like some sort of protective barrier against wherever they live in. And she's doing the bee. She got the beehive hair, you know, even the compound eyes of the bee. And of course, the bee's wings around her neck. Mind blowing. This lace has been copied in wrought iron work. And you see it a lot now. I'm going to show you some examples. But this is a, a same as what you see for a lot of lace. And some of these Russians, you know, this is just the most fantastic clothes and quality items and the furs and the jewels. It's all a part of this technology, this B-Tech and this lace, all in lace, laced. They don't say laced for nothing. What does laced mean? If you had a laced split, something or a laced drink, somebody stuck something in your drink. So lace has been laced with what? Electromagnetic properties, guys. The potentials are massive. I'm thinking about the furs as well, the jewels for definite. So look at this craziness going on just for decoration, just for, you know, fashion statement. No, not at this period. Again, covered on the temple. Again, with this like mesh work of, of a very well made. I can imagine this lace being fantastical. Again, with the gold crown or whatever this plate is, which looks like it definitely capture a charge. And these jewels, jewels hold memory like water, guys. This could be super. Uh, you know, this is could be how the Tatarians are communicating. They don't need speech. They didn't need language. The Babylonians brought all of these different languages with them. The Phoenicians. How do I know? Because you're speaking phonetics. The Germans, the Russians, the Spanish, the French are all speaking phonetics. Nobody can un understand one another, but they're all speaking the same language. Slightly changed. Everywhere. Except for the Welsh, apparently. Uh, so, you know, we've like, where, where does her hair? She's a baldy lady, isn't she? If she is. But like, again, with this thing here around the neck and really, is 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 this um, a horn we were thinking? No, no. This is a stand for holding a technology that is hanging down. The, the lace, the lace. We have lace curtains, not real lace. I'm talking this stuff that you see. In these pictures, this is from an old picture. You can see the lace is completely covering her, and there's more to it that I just showed you. Ceilings in temples in India look exactly like lace. This is a beautiful ceiling. I'll show you some other examples later, which look exactly like some of the styles you see um, ladies embroidering when they make lace. I'll show you an example of that shortly here. So here's the ladies in the past so much attention to detail they literally produce this and it will be probably treated with arsenic they say it's poison but a lot of the stuff they say from the victor this victorian era that they say is poison is not okay look that is a technology that can capture charge this is interactive with this is i can't believe i missed it the more i look and think the more i know um how deep this goes and they show you the clues with, you know, some of these statue arts, these impossible arts with these handkerchiefs around the neck made of lace with all of this detail. Right. Nothing else going on. It's just decoration for a dandy, is it? And here is Lady Di and the King getting married. And she had this like 50 foot long veil or trail, excuse me. And it was made out of silk. All of, uh, excuse me, silk underneath, but all of it was this, this lace, this thin, thin lace. And all brides put lace over their heads, just like they did in the old days, and over their face. And I'm guessing it's not the, the lace, the special lace of old. And I wouldn't mind getting older some of that. You can imagine how much a bit of, if it had survived, imagine how much some, um, say, 17th century lace would cost you. I can imagine our cost in the earth. Is this what that Sam Smith was impersonating when he done that stupid shit with that look like a sofa? Because it's the same sort of shape. But Queen Elizabeth here is showing you that they did... This whole place, right, is artificial. They have been geoengineering engineering the weather since get-go. 
this is 500 years ago okay yeah this is this is a welsh lady okay this is henry the eighth's kid okay the virgin queen many say probably a dude but we're not trying to investigate in the royals right now what we're looking at is the narrative for the spanish amada they turn up the spanish but like um, they're not really worried she's like oh, i'm not worried and um Drake's playing balls in Plymouth. He can't be bothered either. And then um, a massive tempest turns up and smashes the entire Amada off of the coast of uh, Western Scotland and Ireland. And they all get killed and they all get wrecked. No, hardly any survivors. The entire Amada. So she's like, oh, well, the God favours me. Doesn't favour the Spanish. Favours me. Uh, but really, what's really going on is they've got technologies and they've had them all along. Phoenician technologies and the fact that Elizabeth the first is in fact a bumblebee. She's queen bee. She's got the compound eyes. She got hundred percent the bee's wings around her neck, and even the shape of her body is of a bee. It's mind blowing, isn't it? So, Queen Victoria, the most powerful woman to have ever have lived, apparently the biggest empire ever known, the British Empire. Well, we'll, we'll debate that. I we'll think the Grand Territory might have had a, some say in a, the size of empires. And I don't know what kind of person she was, except that she's really off her head on drugs most of the time. You can see that there. If I can, I can see that from a hundred odd year old photograph. So she's dressed in black, but she's not really mourning. She's had a couple of affairs, one with a Scotsman and another with um, her Indian help uh but you know she was she was mourning missing old albert and his and his special his special ring <laughs> probably don't know about prince albert's don't even worry anyway she got silk all over her and she's doing the black thing because she's in mourning like i said for albert and what the fuck ever anyway brides covered in and sometimes you see little sparkles in these laces, don't you? And there's, there's chiffon and there's a couple of types of this really thin lacy stuff, isn't there? I'm no expert, but I'm guessing you ladies on that. But uh, she's doing the um, some sort of Masonic or some sort of I'm a little teacup and the hand signal for sure. Uh, but she's doing the bee. She's got bee neck, bee wings. So there she's got little wings. Will you be able to take off with them little wings? Yeah. She's definitely doing the bee. Okay, Queen Bee, there she is. Queen Bee, Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice um, has got little tiny bee's wings. Any doubt? No. My doubt stopped, like, as soon as I went through all this. It's like, yeah, because that's what they are. They are being bees. She's got the bee's wings. She's got the bee's wings. And like I said, with a bit of, you know, deductive reasoning, you know, bees, wings, uh, cause static and lift and these laces cause static and who even knows maybe even lift b she's doing the compound eyes she's got a veil of lace and bees wings and here's this lace this is the older lace that we're talking about there's been some of it has been treated in metals or arsenic and has superconductive properties so it wasn't just a decoration then guys we knew that anyway it took us a while for the penny to drop the way it's ruffled as well um, i think that's part of the tech you know rather than just a fashion statement i think the ruffle as well and the double ruffle and the layers and layers and layers of um lace that they have on on um you know like say criminal and crinoline gowns or under crinoline gowns they have like layers and layers and layers of this stuff here's the laughing cavalier see it pisses me off why they call him the laughing cavalier because he's not fucking laughing at all is he um but he's doing the old ruffle rooney as well as you can see he's got a load of lace ruffles on his neck looks like a nice cooling system maybe it stops your head popping off in the heat and there's this old lace look it's a bit of discolored this one's been treated with arsenic and there's sigils in them as well i've noticed some of them got like like you see in the raw iron you know some sort of like symmetry going on or half faces or maybe serpents in there maybe so maybe they're even doing that 
So she's definitely got the wings going on. And she's got the beehive haircut. And the kids of this period as well. They're also doing the bumblebee. Let's all do the bumblebee and be busy. So that's a thing. I am definitely 100% confident that that is the situation is the elites try to be bees and they are far more important than we can imagine. Here is um, when I went beekeeping um, in Cardiff, in the centre of the city, actually. Um, but they were beautiful, these bees. There was um, 11 hives. And this is when I got to first um, say hi. We were looking for queens. And if you find a queen, they allowed you to name it, which is really exciting because I really did want to want to name a queen bee. Um, some hives have two bees. They allow two to, to survive. The one eventually will be eaten. Um, but the queen, um, she will literally have sex with the drones and then she will eat all of her drones after. OK. Hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> The energy coming off them is yeah. amazing. You feel that? Yeah. Feeling your body, don't you? Yeah, look at them. I'm loving it. Man, what a frequency. Okay. So love them. Next one. Yay, BH. Woohoo. Hiya, bees. So they're flying around me. <laughs> so they're like. <laughs> so I was an excited chappy uh, to be able to do this. And be able to interact. We had, They had a honey harvest, but. Um, I stopped going there because all the people who were working there were just like going on about space stuff and pissing me off and stuff. And one of the guys said, oh, I used to be a Marine and was like, thought he could just talk to people like poo because he was a bully. Um, so I almost had a fight with him. Uh, so I had to fuck off. I couldn't be dealing with that sort of mentality. So it was fantastic place and a fantastic experience. I would do it again. And if I had the chance or the place that I would keep bees, I really would. Now, bee balls, the drones will do anything, just about anything, to protect the queen bee, as they will do in, in normal society. They will have wars, wars to, to protect the king or the queen. They've literally, in the past, sent millions of men over the top in the trenches of the First World War for king and country. World War II, the same. These people, they thought they were fighting to protect their homeland and queen and country. OK, I grabbed this on Facebook. This is beekeeping world. There's a, a lady on here interacts with bees and they don't mind her one bit. Now, they create a ball to protect the queen when they're exposed. The queen's exposed. Queen. Very much all of this you can just think of is in normal society today. Now, they cook her to death, the heat. So they allow the one. There's a replacement queen and they are literally cooking her with heat they won't hurt her they won't hurt you as long as you're all right with them and it, you know your vibration is right they don't bother you one bit okay yeah professional like hum and be cool otherwise they're gonna have you so she's gonna pick up this ball or whoever this is okay she got stung anyway you see that in the firm's got stung there all right she's gonna try and pick up the ball no, they're not really hurting. They didn't hurt me. I didn't have a sting. A couple of people there did have a sting when I was there, but they didn't bother me, like I said. So this chick, she ain't got no problem, and they ain't got a problem with her whatsoever. She keeps bringing the goodies and the sugar water. They love the sugar water. And you can interact with bees if you know how to interact with bees. They will they will fly at speeds of 50 miles an hour. They'll go 40 miles away from their hive, guys, to, um, to get food. Uh they have to, like, gather pollen from thousands and thousands of flowers just for one spoonful of honey. Yeah, we have jazz, jazz full of honey. Thanks, bees. No, I really think there's more going on with the bees than we could possibly imagine. See these? Orchard bees are blue. Blue bees. Blue bees. And their honeycomb, you know, the way that they are structured to their bees' nests is mathematically perfect, you know. You know these guys don't use um, it's rulers. But it's encoded. They use a communicative system by dance and figure eight. Wiggle dance is how they communicate it. A wiggle dance is how they communicate. And pheromones, chemicals. This is how you dull them out when you add smoke. And and um, you can use that. They use pheromones as well as a treatment. There's a few treatments they use for uh, for bees to keeping them healthy because they are prone to a few diseases. There's insects that like invasion of the body snatchers. Oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that just slipped out. Poor. She's a beekeeper as well, guys. Fucking you know. Wow, super fantastic. And that's going to taste like heaven. They ain't going to bother her, won't they? So, bees. I'm buzzing. Not going to bother. Fucking you know. They're not going to bother. <laughs> Sorry again. They're not going to bother you one bit, are they? Good and a friend. Finding thousands of honeybees. Praise be. Praise be, guys. Praise be. <laughs> okay. That's enough on that subject. Hope you enjoyed that. That's definitely a thing. We'll look at more of that later. Now, there's a warning before I go through these pictures. Okay, guys. We'll have a little bit of a laugh later on. But there is a warning with these pictures. Make sure to share this out. You ain't seen anything like this in your life. Okay. <laughs> These are post-mortem pictures of the Victorian era, the Tatarians. Some of them from around the American Civil War period, 1860s, and others around that time. Now, what the craze is, apparently, is making your child or your relative look alive for a photograph. Okay? But that never worked for this young girl here, did it? It's like she's been all stitched up and then just, that's just, that's ghoulish. Okay? And this woman is ghoulish because she's apparently a famous medium. Um, as you can see, this lady, she got two alive, one dead. You'll be able to see which. And this guy's posing. Um, looks like in a 1950s telephone cubicle with his dead girlfriend, which is highly weird. Now, this little girl is not dead. The mother is. The mother is. The mother is dead and made to look. You can see. That she's not really there and that they've got something up her back to hold us upright um the child is 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 not is not dead obviously um but yeah yeah so they they went to that extent before i guess in before rigor mortis setting <laughs> and you're that clairvoyant apparently if you if you uh look at her she knows you looked at her even from the dead she's got what lace lace on covering her is this to do with antiqua dead as well i'm starting to wonder now and again with the same sort of uh, what you've seen with them tatarian women with the same sort of headdress and she was a clairvoyant one of the world's most famous clairvoyants guys okay and um what was her name's her name i've got a name somewhere and um there she is dead so spooky, I can imagine uh, the grieving that they must go through, you know, when it's a little one. But, you know, making them pose like they're still alive is a really weird, creepy thing. It gives me goose pimples. It gives me all, you know, it's just fucking weird as hell. So obviously he's alive. She's got eyes, but you can see she's looking into nothing. The eyes haven't decomposed yet. But you can see there she's like proper dead and he's posing with her, which is really, really weird in itself. What's going on with his tie? Looks like scruffy fur type. Really weird. Anyway, so a bride. She looks a bit doody. Who's dead as a dodo? He's put a bridesmaid dress. Let's 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 reenact the happiest day of our life when we got married. But she's dead again, covered in lace, lace veil, the tech. This one's harrowing. It's a beautiful little girl and a mother. She could not be more beside herself in grief. You can see that in her eyes. But that is, that moves me. That is heartbreaking. Uh, that photograph, I can understand. But the rest, the way they pose, and because that's beautiful. Okay. The baby is real. She is not. The eyes look like they got emotion, but they're looking into nowhere, and she's actually been rosed up, and she's in fact dead. Not the baby. Do you find that weird? Okay. Would you believe that she's dead? They can make them look very much alive, can't they? And put in the doll with her as well. It's the weirdest thing that I've ever seen in my life. Some of these are just hard to believe. Oh, you can see she's dead. The eyes are just gone and she's got bags. And Again. So, uh, lace, she's got lace clothes on, but that's pitiful. That is really pitiful. So, I'm not sure which one. One of these in the photograph, and maybe even the mother in there, you know, but one of these is actually not alive. 
Um, I think she's definitely not alive. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that one is uh, not... That one started to decompose and turn back into a skeleton. Have you noticed the old people, when they're really old, they almost look like skeletons, don't they? Their face just draws back. they got big, bold eyes. They look like literally skeletons. So, oh, there's romantic. Let's pop her under a tree. Her eyes are gone because she's fucking properly dead. Okay, let's do a little enactment and pretend that he's been died in battle. Okay, we've got the angel, girl, a crying mother, and dad, who's dead, laying on the floor. He didn't actually die in battle, obviously. He died of whatever, a, a toilet accident or whatever. But they're making out he was a hero. Yeah, I know. It's as spooky as The Shining. I know. I know. Which one? I don't know. If I was to uh, hazard a guess, I would say the one on the right. But they are twins. And um, one of them, if not both of them, I'm not sure, are dead. So I'm guessing they've, like, um, nailed her to the wall or something. Or she's got some sort of board to hold her upright. The boots probably help. Why the doll? She looks like she's looking to the left. It still looks really, really weird. Whatever's going on, I don't know. So apparently one of these, um, if not both, that's highly sinister. Let's reenact a lovely little innocent scene, but like let's just lay some dead children down, shall we? Dead? She looks very much alive, doesn't she? Again with the lace. The eyes look like they're alive, but if you really look, you can't see any life in there. And she's looking into nowhere because once you look at them eyes, you see, you instantly see that she's not there. You know, that's, that's a dead person. Spooky, isn't it? And weird. I know. Dead. I think they got a stand or something to hold him up. There's something holding him behind. Can you see it here? Maybe even a woman holding him up and she's out of the frame. don't know whether you can just see like, a dress behind him. <laughs> And he's being held up because he's actually post mortem, post med mortage. Oh, she looks nice. Oh, they look like they could be like a really interesting modern couple. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, very sad. A lot of a uh, lot of infant death in the past, as well as adults, because seems like they're killing everyone left, right, and centre, like they are now. But now we got death. Deaf uh, temples, haven't we? Sorry, I mean hospitals. So she's dead. Yes, I felt a bit. I felt a bit unusual. So I thought I'd go to the far, the pharmacy to see if I could fuck myself up some more. So she's dead. Let's see, there's no one at home. It's crazy how lifelike they can get her. But they said when my nana had some of that in Bamin done and stuff, my family went in to see her. They said, oh, she looked beautiful. She looked very much alive. Looks like she was just sleeping. I was like, oh, you fucking weird lot. I wouldn't like to see that. See, I didn't want to see any, anybody like that dead. Play on your mind, wouldn't it? So a little boy, quite dead. Very pitiful, really. And a baby. You can see the eyes on that's dead. Sorry, guys, if you are upset by this. It is pretty harrowing but you just gotta look and just think what the fucking hell is going on with this place all right let's guess which one's dead there eh it's him in the middle it looks like he's staring at the camera but i think his eyes have been just well positioned they're not really vacant are they they're vacant he's not really there his brothers are there but he's not there because he's sitting down being held up because he's dead it's the weirdest thing think i've ever seen guys it's the weirdest thing i've ever seen i can't even believe it but you don't have to take a genius to work out which one's dead so can you imagine doing this in the in the modern day it's like oh I, can i can i um can you dig my mother up please i want to have a photograph taken of her or, or you know if or, my wife's dead so that was a bit unusual oh they got him posing over a cane hold on to the cane like that oh it's holding him up oh it's a stand it's a stand can you see He's being held up with a stand. See, in my mind, that is insane and sick as fuck. Um, in the 1800s, oh, it was quite nice. It was a lovely thing to do. Was, oh, oh, I got a lovely memory of my dead kid with his eyes bulging out of his fucking head like a horror film. Again, with the lace. 
they have christening clothes in in uh, lace as well don't they so a lot of lace in antiquity right take a wild guess which ones are gonna yeah so nasty so gnarly so i can see somebody behind him like a woman or a man maybe has been airbrushed out who's holding him up in the chair his eyes are closed she's being held up by a stand that is sick and little girl she's got the shell handbag going on i can't imagine anyone wanting to do this in the modern day i can't imagine although you do get people doing the weirdest shit don't you he's not his blokes having babies these days so there's all weird shit going on so having photographs with dead relatives might be you know somebody might be doing it don't know you get mutual cannibalism in germany don't you so i'm not sure <laughs> yes come around eat a bit of my liver so as long as i can eat a bit of yours she looks pissed off because she's not really there i wonder how they do the faces oh god oh that looks like greta that looks scary she looks like she's actually looking at the camera well the one eye does the other one's not there oh my 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 it's harrowing isn't it it's really like playing on my mind a little bit the spooky twins are really spooky I can't actually tell which one's a goner. Maybe that one. No, that one. Her eyes are skew if. Can you see that? So that one. Weird. It says hive there. Archive. Archive. There's another one. An archive where we keep our stuff is an arc hive. Because <sighs> we're in the arc. Archives. Okay, now the penny just dropped there. So I was thinking as well, you know, guys, um, it's like we they got us living in dwellings, haven't they? So what, what does it mean to dwell? Oh, she, she died and he dwelled upon her for years. He's dwelling there. I'm dwelling. I'm dead. I'm dwelling. So stay in and dwell in is what they say. So this is a nice, cute Christmas card from Germany. <laughs> a hearty Christmas card with a load of dead frogs. I don't know that's lived in there. And American Civil War. They have um, their husbands as well. That's quite common. There's American Civil War soldiers coming back. She's smiling. She's happy. She got to see her dad again. Although he was dead. But there you go. That's life. In this case, that's death. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. Oh, I hope these come to an end soon. This is too harrowing. So I'm not sure if she's breastfeeding or pretending to breastfeed. And she is dead. Or they've just attached a baby to a dead woman's tit. Which is what I think's happened. So is there anything more ghoulish um, or creepy than what I've just showed you? Please let me know. Because I very much doubt it. We're moving on. Because there's a lot to get through. So how many am I got shared in my chat? 807 people. Could you please share this out? If you if you can share it out Twitter or um, Facebook, we got so much juice to get through here. You're going to be feeling a bit puffed out. Okay, what do you think? What do you think, Lee? Lee, front of British, Mark calling Orson. Come in, Orson. Mark calling Orson. Come in, Orson. Okay, that should do it. So the manners. Now we get a lot of um, Indian stupas that look exactly like what they tell us the Vimanas are. You get Vimanas in the Bhagavad Gita or the Madhabharat, and they are uh, flying saucers, if you like. Um, but they do have specifications for these things, and they work on spinning mercury. Also, some cave paintings you can see Vimanas there. So they do know what it works, or the workings, and you can see wheels within wheels, mercury inside spinning. Two cores left. And as you can see on this stone, wherever that is, Himalayas may be, um, you can see what looks like a static equipment here and here, which have a manners, which can cause lift. And there's the glocken, the bell, apparently turns up, um, it's a time machine, apparently the Germans designed it, the bell. Turns up in, I think it was Kecksburg, in America, um, in the 50s, they said it, like, uh, jumped from 1940s to there. Um, the bell, the glocken, but it is also a Vimana and cited to be working on Mercury. Now, also, pyramids 
in Mexico had canals of mercury and then pyramids. They don't really like bananas, don't they? So they got specifications from bananas. They know exactly if they if I well, what, what I show you now, if somebody was to actually use the initiative to use the Vermana uh, schematics and the bit of technology, which I'm going to show you in this video right now, they could literally get it to fly like this scene out of the Marabarat. And there it is, the Vermana. They know exactly how this shit works. So they can do it. Spinning, spinning, liquid, mercury which I'm going to show you now. Now, you can do a lot of stuff with mercury. It's quite a miracle substance. I've got some gallium right in front of me. I was going to do an experiment with that. We'll see how that goes a bit later. But red mercury is a thing because we used to have it in our valves in the old televisions in the past. Okay. Now, they do say that it's hazardous and it causes brain tumors, etc. But they would say that, and this is why. So we are scared from childhood with poisonous mercury. Okay, there's chunks of what looks like red mercury right here. Oh, thank you for the loves. Uh, we're scared from childhood of poisonous mercury. Let me move it on a little bit. Okay, so this guy, he's not got a problem with sticking it down his Gregory Peck at all. So I go in with that because I used to have it in my mouth. I used to have it swim around and I've had mercury fillings because only mercury, mercury vapor and additional compounds are dangerous, not the mercury itself. Now, things float in mercury. It's got amazing properties. You can literally, as you see in a minute, um, float an anvil. Trying to sell mercury in Russia, uh, you can't go to prison for several years. So he's floating in a... Um, in a pool of mercury, you're a anvil. So why is everything so serious about mercury? Well, so there's the mercury being floated. Uh, very soon to understand everything and all of humanity with you concerning this unbelievable substance. Remember, mercury is Hermes. So this guy, he's got, um, as you can see, a, a weight on a stick and this guy's a weightlifter and he can't do it but if you rev this thing up using a cordless drill because it's got mercury inside and let that mercury spin and the thing itself this will happen okay zero g no weight at all Anti-gravity is a thing because there it is. So expand upon that with these, the, you know, literally, if I, I was literally saying to my son only, only the other day, I was like, if we had the resources, we could build up a manna. I literally could build up a manna if I had the resources and that mercury and massive amounts of electricity. So it's, uh, the construction allowed more rotation and less frictional force. Perhaps you would see absolute levitation. So there is some resistance, but you would get pure levitation. It needs like no effort whatsoever. Okay. And look at what Mercury is capable of. So and no wonder they're saying it's dangerous when it does stuff like that. Can you imagine the benefits for humanity with uh, maglev technology to be able to levitate stuff, not lift it any anywhere. You wouldn't need ladders. You wouldn't need dangerous scaffolding. You wouldn't need anything. All you'd need is this technology. And you could levitate any weight. Anvils just float on it, guys. It's like nothing. Weight doesn't even come into it. So liquid mercury. And as you can see, a positive and an electric, positive and negative charge into this bowl. And this will give you um, anti-gravity properties, as you will see. <coughs> Oh, hurry up. My OCDC can't stand things going slow. Hurry it. That's better. So then it starts to center you. It starts to spin at a great velocity. Check this out. What a substance. 
And um, it also, you know, it reacts with sound well. You know, you can get somatic patterns, vibrational qualities in um, coupled with this technology and the vibrational qualities of mercury. I, I'm th I, I'm getting all sorts of ideas in my head, guys. I really, really am like like inventions that they don't even think of or know of. Brilliant. And then it's the reverse. Very, very clever. So um, imagine if you do this in a loop tube where mercury is in a vacuum and then you would get maglev technology or anti-gravity. Interesting? No shit. Here's more anti-gravity. It's a similar principle. Where do you get hold of all of that mercury? I would love some. I've got gallium, as I said. That's a non-Newtonian element um, that has similar properties. So there you are. What they used in the Vermanas. And this is the similar to what I just showed you with the Vermana. And that magnet in the middle causes it to spin. And it spins at an incredible velocity when left. It says that the man has flew on Mercury. And as you can see, all there is is a current being passed through with a ring magnet in the middle. And it is spinning. And that spin, when it's quick enough, could cause anti-gravity. So, you know, in my mind, you know, I'm not like a, an electrical genius or anything. My son is. But in my mind, it's like all of this is just seems so doable. And if it is, for my head, then, you know, a greater mind can put this shit together, no problem. And this is what they must be doing for their fake alien invasion. And how much have we been robbed? And if it's that simple to get, you know, anti-gravity technology, inertia dampening and all the rest within our reach, within our reach, guys, we just don't, maybe we just haven't thought big enough. I don't know. It's difficult to say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. This is mind-blowing. So these are in Congo. Okay, can you imagine the circuit board cities being built with this stone? Or just having this stone in the past anyway, because it exists now. Electrical stones in the Congo. Stones that contain an electrical charge. You just put one wire on one end, one wire on the other, and it's enough for this fella to arc, weld his axe together, just out of the rock. You can pick any rock and do this experiment. Congonese black rock are electric and usable electric so why are we having batteries why don't they ship congonese black rocks all over the fucking world and we can literally arc weld with them so how much do you feel skanked now with the lace tech the queen tech the um anti-gravity surely 100 percent, definitely a thing and they got bricks or stones which create an electrical charge how much we have been skankaroomied wouldn't you say I'm coming back for a second. Okay. I don't know what's going on. For 865 of you watching, that's simply marvellous. It's good to see you all. You having a good flat day? What do you think of all that then? Huh? It's a good to be thinking that, wasn't it, guys? So contribute your thought patterns in comments and whatever else to what you think about all of this. Be the change. Okay. Be well. Be well. So, Alva, Alva Billy's there. Great stuff. Oh, good, good, good. I am Longfrog. Much love to you. The Anvil video is coolio. And Crafty Kim's in the house. All cons and lies. So, next, we're going to look into some mud flood and just tons of stuff, guys. So, buckle in. Make sure to share this out if you would. I know I keep saying that, but, you know, just to try and break through on the internet is like me having to say that. Uh, moot point, because otherwise... And um, truth is not very popular, Capilocious, my brother. Cold steel. At all. Especially videos like this. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Alva Billy. Become mafia. Congonese. You know it. Hippie shakes in the house. And son of Overbrook. No way, yes way. And little wing. So, don't worry. We're not done with the mind blows. There's plenty more mind blows to come on this show tonight. So just JP's in the house, Lapis is in the house, Jay's in the house, Three Fingers, and all my epic brothers and sisters. Uh, spill Mercury anywhere, everywhere, and she would chase the around the Mercury with her siblings to get back in the globe. I'm not sure what that means. I wish I hadn't bothered with that, Christian. Sage, good to see you. Brian. 
Mas I I'd send you a book Monday. I'll get you a book off Monday. Sasquatchio, if that's what it says. Sequilio hummingbird. I'll just say hummingbird. Okay, somewhere in time. Lord Tangy, love you all. Mickey bro. Avidas, Liddy's in the house. So you just said that. JP, Crafty, Kimmich, Mercury and Magnets, make UFOs. You know it. Okay, and that's a big topic, you know, with all this weird bullshit that's going on just lately. Okay, let's get back into the juice. Because there's a long way to go. Okay, entire screen. So, mud flood. Now, this lady, Lee passed me this on TikTok. That's something very interesting. No, oh, this lady's not thinking about mud flood whatsoever. Apparently, so I'm told, I don't go on TikTok because it's just like loads and loads of just quick videos for the short attention spanners, isn't it? Uh, so I don't want to do that. And I don't want to watch videos, really. So um, she's on TikTok and she's talking about um, stones in a plant pot. Listen to what she has to say. If you've been told to put rock or gravel at the bottom of your containers to improve drainage, I hope you didn't listen. Here's why. Water will not readily move from a fine textured medium like potting soil to a coarse textured medium like rock or gravel. Instead of moving all the way through the container, the water will Well, Fucking glitched. Bummer. Anyway, it doesn't mix. So, with the stone. Let's have a look at these. These are images. That fucked up. I couldn't even really load that. <laughs> so, um, these are images of mud flood in London, but some of these are the building of the underground or the underground that they say that they built new then. Um, I just got a distinct feeling that it was there already and they're just digging the mud out. But the architecture in this place, look at the size of this stuff. And the stinking freaking mess of it all is just unbelievable. What a terrible place to work. Apparently, men were working in this. Oh, looks like they're building some sort of station there, but it all seems to be below ground level. But what a terrible working environment in the Victorian era. There must have been a lot of deaths and stuff. So, working on the rock pile and banging stone in a quarry used to be a punishment for prisoners to be able to turn rocks like that using sledgehammers into small chip bins. So I'm guessing for all of the chip bins, I don't think they had massive machines to do that back in the day. Because... The evidence shows that they never. So all of the chippings of the stones that are under railway lines and all over the Victorian world, apparently, were did like this. So I, I got problems with that in my head. I can't imagine all of the stone of the antique world being smashed up by humans this in this manner uh, because that used to be a punishment, didn't it? So that is exceptionally hard labour. So... Something else going on with that there. These huge tracts of land as well that these railways, how many houses, you know, would have been here? And why is there a bridge going over there anyway? Um, there's not a river here, is there? No. And um, so, what, they're building this. Um, so that was a coincidence that the bridge was there already, wasn't it? And they got the railway trains going underneath. So, hmm. That was very convenient. I know, we'll just, the bridge was there to go over what? The river? No, the railway that is not there yet because it's been covered in mud and they're just making it visible and digging all the mud out, which is all there. Otherwise, why would there be a bridge? Which came first, the chicken or the eggage? Yeah, I know. So, more removing mud. I'm not sure where this area is. It's got pine trees and stuff, but that looks like a massive mud flood area. Mixed in with rock here. And um, they got to carry it on carts all the way to whatever for under railway trains. I can't imagine that. So this is a site in Turkey, I think it was. And it looks to be Byzantine, but Phoenician, probably. And it was this deep under what? 
the mud. It was this deep under the mud. So they literally, in this picture, dug the mud out and exposed the classical world, which was, in a lot of cases, mud flooded. And they got a little narrow, narrow gauge railway ripping through here. You can see that? How oh, very unusual. So that they can what? Take the mud out of this antiquity site. Hmm. So more of London Underground. So they had these little things. Yeah, they were using them on the narrow gauge to put the mud in. Oh, that is an unbelievable mess. So I'm guessing all these woods are going over maybe a tunnel that is underneath. It's difficult to say, but you can see mud flood windows over there. See, see that? Hmm. Okay. And this is in London, but I just, I can't get how these, see this brick here and all of this uh, servicing area or whatever they are, um, vaulting for the sides of what will be the railway lines. They're like, there and they look proper old already i can't imagine they just built these because it doesn't look like they've just built these and i've seen them in edgeware road station the first underground station in london i think he's working with a top hat on isn't he that laborer and he's removing some mud and that wheelbarrow jesus they didn't have tires in the wheelbarrows in them days i bet they were hard to push so yeah this train is removing all that mud the railway line's there, so they're just shoveling all that off, sticking it straight in the train and taking it all away. What a great way to get rid of mud in a mud flood, which is probably what they're doing anyway. Centre of many cities, these underground started. London, Moscow, New York, and the rest of the world followed soon after. You can see this dome here is the start of what looks like some sort of tunnel there. But it's just such a cacophony of mess and noise. Um, that you can't really work out what's going on. It's just such a mess. I could never work in an environment like that. But this steam crane is amazing. I haven't seen too many of them in antiquity. To get the mud out. So here's a cute, cute little dock here. And I think this is Newport, South Wales, because we got the transporter bridge here. That looks like the transporter bridge that you get in Newport. And I don't recognize this unbelievable crane, but the scenery looks like it might be Newport. I think it might be. And this steamer, Tramper here, is out of Paris. She's a big, big steamer. Canopies all over. I don't think I've seen that. Must be some sort of luxury boat. What else we got? Tugs. No mud. Uh, that is an interesting picture. I've never seen a crane that big before. And the tunnels, you know, we've so many evidences of, you know, the tunnels there and they're supposed to have been in there and they dug it through. But that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing them move all of this mud and then you get to the tunnel and it's already there and there's all mud in it. Oh, that high. Like it's already there. You don't build a tunnel and fully through like mud. That makes no sense. You know, you've got to build a tunnel uh, when the mud's not there. So <laughs> that makes no sense. Um, which is essentially what these guys are doing, aren't they? Using narrow gauge railways, just taking out all of this access mud for that, which was probably there underground all the time anyway. What we got here? Uh, 1808, can't be. 1868, that's right. 1868, construction of some sort of viaduct. Um, but what you do see is really old dry stone wall in there. Can you see that? Really old. Look at the size of that kid. This is massive uh, undertaking there. Eh? Uh, across, they're doing it across there then. Viaduct. What a mess. And what a lot of mud. And the mud is up there and the walls are down there. I know it's on a river bank, but still. Mud, mud, glorious mud. It's all the way up the wall, all the way up to there, all the way up to there. Really, didn't bother digging all of that out. Why would you bother? Don't get rid of all of the mud, do you? I wonder what that post does. It's got nothing going on with it except a spike on top. Not many people around. So that's really nice little snapshot of 
a castle somewhere. That can't be the same place as I was just looking on the last image, although that ship looks like it would be there. And I transport a bridge. Looks like it was in Newport. But again, this is all buildings, isn't it? And, you know, this is uh, obviously the modern day. You can see the JCB here on ground level. And below ground level, windows go into where exactly? Doors go into where exactly? See? There's the older world just below our feet. All red brick, what they would call Roman wall in shorter, thinner red bricks. And it's all in mud or that much below ground level. Because it's been a mud flood. This is mad. Quebec. Quebec, that doesn't even, that looks like it's the centre of Belgium or, you know, or Bruges or something. But they got the, you know, the, the notorious Greco-Romano temple, city halls and government buildings. But how many people are there? I get it's a market. They got all the, you know, the stuff to sell on the back of the horses. But wow, that's a lot of people. And that looks like Belgium. It doesn't even look like canada or french-speaking canada or maybe it is a bit of a french feel to it yeah all right maybe uh and that would make sense okay okay so what uh, what gantries did they envision for getting rid of mud i think this might be a tunneling thing to go through this muddy hill and then the mud in there and up there and then what do they do with it take it away on horse and cart well that seems a lot of effort just to go through that hill but no evidence that they've actually started that tunnel, is it, really? And look at this. This is New Westminster. New Westminster, isn't it? Is this the one? No, Quebec. Fuck me. Sorry. There's ones um, later on, New, New Westminster, completely gone. But Quebec seems to have had a bad time. The old Ladderling. The old Ladderling. What happened to Quebec? Well, so they had a city fire, the same. I think I have covered that in the past. Jesus. What the fuck has happened? 18. Oh, that's interesting. Is that a J? 866, 1866. And city burned down. Junior American Civil War, though, the last year. It might have been that. <clears throat> oh, no, it couldn't have been. Couldn't have been. Not in fucking Quebec. Don't think they were included in the American Civil War <laughs> on the campus here in Canada. Um, oh, what are all these horses doing? Oh, okay, they're rolling out the mud, and the rest is being removed. Okay, and oh, it's London, I think this is, isn't it? Yeah, and again, all of this stuff below ground level. Jesus, what's happened there? It might be more of Quebec, actually. That looks fucked. It does look like London, though. It's not up there. Excuse me. Some sort of scaffold. Weird. And the mud. Let's have a look at the size of that uh, steam crane. Amazing. Imagine the noise there, though. That's a nice little picture. Cool. I bet they drunk a lot of Guinness. Get rid of all of the mud. So when's that? Uh, eight, 1911, September the 2nd. And there's a lot of men involved in getting rid of this mud. So where are they going? Right the way through there. They're all the way up there. Jesus Christ. They're going to be going all the way through there. Get rid of all our mud. Wow. Some of these um, engineering, you know, jobs of the past are just defies explanation. This is electric, isn't it? 1911. Okay, you would expect to see some electric at 1911. But wow, what um, what a lot of mud they're going to be removing and what a lot of people involved in that. A bit of classical world again. This is Turkey. And they're using narrow gauges to get away mud to dig out this. The size of the masonry. And the mud was this high. So this uh, site you're looking at here was completely covered. All I can imagine showing was these bits of giant columns which are on top of the field. Look, from another world. Can you imagine this world of giants? The size of the columns. This was a world of giants. Not ours. Wow, look at that. Again in Turkey, isn't it? Yeah. Glass staircase. 
So all of this was below ground level. Entire settlement. Uh, that's ground level up there. All below our feet. And these people, they be guessing they've been told that when this building got blown up, you can see all buildings below the street, which is what you can see. Walls, wall air, a couple of coins. It's a bit of, bit of sewerage going on there. <clears throat> but that's what bombardments and fires show mud flood brilliantly. So this, this is a good one. This got me going. So they're ripping through this escarpment for an under, for a railway line, like they've done on the 1800s, right? So what? Uh, that was not there already. That wall looks proper ancient. And this plaster all the way up and all the way up there looks proper, proper ancient. Um, so I can't get my head around that they built that because I really don't think so. So it looks like it was there already. Um, and they're just digging the mud out because it looks a bit wet, like the mud's already, you know, was in there and the cranes there. And this is old. And the mud's there, look. All that was underground. Looks to be using um, high pressure hoses. Yeah, high pressure hoses to get the mud out. Can you see these? Because that's a good way of digging mud, is high pressure hoses. But it's a modern day crane. So getting into the modern day. Some other excavations. This one's really low. And uh, Australian Drug Corporation. The underground's there. Oh my God. It's not very um, deep below the street, is it? The underground tunnel. Maybe six foot. But this is walking level, and all of this caper was below street level. Looks like a coin there. Craziness. Looks like an arch, maybe there. Well, that is an arch. An entire world below our feet. And below that, there's another world as well. And below that, there's another world as well. And below that, and below that. Oh, this is surely London, yeah. The underground. That's a nice little shot of St. Paul's Cathedral there. And apparently digging entrances to the underground, which they do all of the time anyway. Um, Cock. Cocker. Cocker something. Cocker's Lacey. Cocker's Lacey. Yeah. So, look at this. You've got the Greco-Romano temple there. All of that wall there. And then below there, you've got all that stuff in the mud. Classical world. It got buried. A lot of it. Not all. Oh. More excavations of mud. So I think these, you know, apart from engineering, I think some of them are just like the later ends of clearing mud floods out you know it's just so much fucking mud hanging around look how deep this goes for this for this uh bridge here craziness isn't it again look look it looks like this stuff happening down here wall type stuff all right look at this let's have a look at this image <clears throat> not too much going on on the humanity um but what it looks like is in the park is a lot of mud being uh, removed. That's an unusual building up there. It looks like a ship. So, yeah, um, what they have is a shitload of mess, a shitload of people, and all they do is remove the mud that is on top of the railways, the tunnels. Look at this, right? They're all coming to see this. This um, Humphreys, this is in London. They're all coming to see all of this settlement entity, which I'm guessing they're saying is Roman and being exposed. Yeah, because this is street level up there. All of these arches going out to where exactly? Well, it would have been a street below the street. And then the mud comes in and then everything goes over. All them buildings, mud flood buildings, they go deep. Some in my city, two stories. Other cities in Britain, two stories, not one, two stories below ground level. Look at this. Is that metal? Looks like a fashies. So, oh, stack of old lampposts. Let's get rid of them. We'll replace them with shit later. So, oh my God, look at that mess. I'm afraid I couldn't tell you what's happened there. It looks like a nuclear bomb, if they were a real thing, has gone off. Let's just have a look. This is a good one. So, allegedly, this is the first skyscraper in New York. I've seen this before in the past. Okay, the tower building. Okay, this is street level here. Okay. 
So it was torn down 24 years later in uh, 1913. And does it look brand new? No. Um, there's different color because there's a building here that was torn down telling us this skyscraper was already there and not just being built. So this um, building that's been torn down could show you that this building was there already and not new skyscraper, but a very old skyscraper. Um, but there's a question here with what is this hole in the ground? There's a big fuck off hole in the ground there, which I have seen also in Fifth Avenue, and I never got to uh, find out what that was doing there. Very similar, same sort of thing, big big hole in the ground. So we're moving on. Right, we're going to have a little chuckle now at some of my favourite book covers. I collect book covers and album covers for their interesting, uh, interesting wordage. Okay, so this is the Lady Book of Evil. Here you can see the personification of evil. Okay. She's so evil, not even, not even the devil wanted to talk to her. Margaret Thatcher, D. Thatcher, D. Thatcher. Okay, I've got confidence. The McDonald sisters, okay, you've got confidence. You're going to be needing it, ladies. Dump the slides. The slides are not becoming. Do you think they're doing okay? Well, spread a little bit of love and hope that they make it. They probably won't. Right, I'd rather have Jesus. Okay, I'd rather have Jesus than what? I'd rather have Jesus than what? Because you're just leaving it a bit open-ended then. Okay, have you seen Velvet Fog? Yeah, sexy bands of the old days, guys. Oh, yeah, they're like the Velvet Underground, only upside down, on acid and dead. So, brilliant cover, though, I must admit. I like the... The juggage is fantastic. <laughs> Look, he's in Bundy's. That's a bit sad, though, isn't it? I was thinking of getting for like flat earth, British flat thumbs underpants. I could model. I could model them on my on a flat day show. show. No. Oh, all right then. I won't. We'll have a vote, okay? Um, Red Fox, you gotta wash your ass. You've got to wash your ass. Nobody wants a pooey bum. Okay, this is a given in reality, and that is tell you that this is the case but most people already know that tennessee ernie ford he touched me where'd he touch you in hmm? where'd he touch you in tell us it's okay jesus will understand now don't laugh okay because laughing would probably mean you probably got a little bit of a narcissistic streak in you okay <laughs> oh that's a lovely guinea pig so this guy here He's a failed Britain's Got Talent um, contestant. I'm not sure. I think he had um, he was going to do like guinea pig stuff on uh, Britain's Got Talent. So it's probably a really nice guy. It's no point, you know. I had a dream last night, and the first time I've ever seen myself in a mirror in a dream. I had a dream I was fat. I was a dream I was fat. It was fucking horrible. It was like Michelin Man. And I remember thinking in the dream, oh, fuck that, I'm going to hit the whiz which I would never do anyway because I'm 55 and that would not be advisable. But I thought it in the dream because there's no way in a million years that I'm going to turn into fat man. Okay. So, but that's highly impossible anyway, because I'm not proper thin, but I'm just saying I had a dream. That I did also had a dream. Oh, Betty's gay with middle. Um, I also had a dream that I bought toilet roll and it turns out to be kitchen roll. I was disappointed. So that wasn't very important and ground moving at all, but just weird dreams. And it was, Weird shit that happens. Why pick on a woman? Men have bad breath too. It's true. It's true. Men have halitosis, but women, fucking hell, son. It's like they, they like literally breathe green smoke, don't they? It's like fucking, you don't wave your hands because that would be really rude. But some of them are like fucking hell. It's like breath like an ass. Men too. Right. Music of El Topo. Okay. Um, shades of joy maybe somebody should have told him um the name of the album title because i'm not seeing any joy there i'm seeing like i don't know fucking serial killer um shock um lsd it's difficult to say isn't it but i'm not seeing any shades of joy there whatsoever but whatever uh bio biological necessity <laughs> casey <Seattle. laughs> it's a good little book i can't tell you what it's about be withdrawn 
them Mills and Boone books. Right? Have you seen all them old ladies buying Mills and Boone years ago? I thought that's fucking disgusting. We knows what's in them Mills and Book. Oh, he he stroked her hair and his hand slipped down to her thigh. Moved up a five. Oh, you know where this is fucking going. I haven't met a read a Mills and Boone. My mother used to maybe read one or two. So I know what shit goes down anyway. I've been around a long time. Eeny Blyton, five go gluten free for Robin. Yeah, Robin's gluten free. So we should all just not eat any more gluten. It is a thing. I know I've got a couple of friends that are gluten free. So I'm finding it difficult to eat anything wholesome and tasty. And that is affordable at the moment. Um, I think the whole of Britain is on probably Heinz tomato soup or something like that. I got a sneaky feeling because... Um, most people are. There's hardly anything nutritious I can, you can get anymore. It's fucked up. And it's all shit. So this is interesting. Do you know this? Country can't afford to lose. Make valuable adult emergency staff. Okay, so enrolling your child in the under seven fire service is now mandatory. This is from the Suffolk County Council in the 1970s. Okay. Uh, parents who suffer more than three losses will receive a free fund funerary grift voucher, which is nice. Um, and an imin imination, Im uh, imitation gold picture that is sick, <clears throat> but you know, they're saving lives, you know, they got some purpose in life, it's better than them growing up being drug dealers or what have you. So, religion, the Scarfolk Little Minds Reading Scheme does it feel like that? 33 and a half pence, Illuminati almost confirmed. 9C, yeah, nearly 10 cc's. Captain Birdseye buys blood diamonds. Now, I knew there was something going on with them fish fingers, guys. It's more to it, isn't there? And I always thought, like, Captain Birdseye looked like, like a pedal. Um, and like, like there's any archetypical, you know, way they look. But I mean, fucking hell, it's Captain Birdseye. He used to be a joke in the 70s, didn't he? So, yeah, that's what he was doing, buying blood diamonds. Hmm. Playing games. Granny's shit hot at playing marbles and wins all the best ones. So, Granny, she's got all the elevensies. I love that dog. I'm having bad, like, broody love dog moments. Granny got all my elevensies and all my bumpers. And she's got my, my, um, oh, what were they called then? Something eyes. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Jason builds a pneumatic buck machine on a company dime. So I'm guessing it's got extra power for those important moments. Okay. The pneumatic buck machine. Very popular. I think that would be in this day and age. Don't you? Benefit cheats. Here they are. Now you know what they look like. You can make a phone call on these. You grass them up. They give you money. Doesn't even matter. Say... There's two people, they're pretending to be royals, and they're just mugging everyone for loads and loads and loads of money. So guess what David Cameron's thinking about all the time? Yeah. We know. We knew that anyway. Uh, what's he got on there? Carrie, he's not voting for himself. What a fucking spanner. Dear, dear, dear. And Lord, I don't mean to be ungrateful, but please, could the next one be a bit bigger? Fanny Stretcher. Okay, she's not ungrateful. Okay, she says she's a little bit ungrateful. Next time. Okay, so basically, she's finished with her boyfriend because his dick didn't keep. His dick wasn't that big. <laughs> That's really sad, isn't it? She she cried. Nah, fuck, fuck him. Fuck him. He killed himself. Bad behaviour, including unfriendly gestures, will be dealt with harshly by Suffolk Nursery uh, School Pupil Information Department. OK, so be careful, especially if you're going to be uh, making an improper unfriendly gesture. They will break your fingers. OK, this was 1970 school. I'm sure plenty of you went through this experience. There'll be more to giggle at and have a look at later. OK. And it will be totally un-PC. Heavens. Heavens to Mercatroy. Fanny Stretcher. <laughs> anyway, so what we're looking at here is Indian 
temple ceilings. They look like lace, some of them. Also look like a highly technological thing. Now, what I've been looking at then is images um, in temples of like um, Krishna and Arjuna and um, a lot of the, um, I guess, in godages, godheads, gods, um, from, from the Veda. And what you see is they're sat in some sort of chair, I kind of thinking, beam me up, Scotty technology, under things that look just like this. Oh, that looks like a bit of a jet plane engine. There's stuff in there as well. And there's writing on there, so we know the power of the written word, especially if it's a prayer. So um, these are the technology, I think. Look at that. See, they look. This looks like engine bits. Okay, can you imagine with a ton of power coming out of these? Standing underneath them, okay, beaming out, okay, and then beaming in to another place that has one of these um, particle um, tele transporters, which I definitely think is a thing in my head. If they can do it, if it's spoken and it's spoken into, into the world, then it is a thing because we speak things into existence. And that is a technology and not a decoration. Yeah, it's, some of it is in soapstone, but whoa, the shells, the, it's like the lattice work is lace. Again, that B-Tech and deities all the way around, but absolutely mind-blowing. Can you imagine a beam? coming out of this bit here because i can i could just all looks like power related energy related like all of these things you're converging into the middle but you can't miss that they're all beautiful cymatic patterns aren't they they're vibrational qualities aren't they each one with his own set so that shows you that their technology anyway and they're not just for decoration overhead in a temple. This is a tech. This, I know, is a tech. Look at that. Look at that. That is just mind-blowing. That's what you see when you look up. Oh, my days. Again, with our lacy look. But, wow, just mind-blowing to think that they chis chiseled that out of copper chisels. So, again, you've got these on the floor. But this is a, like a, a lotus flower. And the lotus flower is synonymous with the shape of the earth anyway. And that is like a lotus flower opening. And um, this thing in here, it definitely looks like it's some sort of wheel plate and like the lug nuts to hold it on. And it definitely really does look like technology. Look at this on the temple ceiling. So, uh, yeah, I can imagine this active. I can imagine when times were, um, you know, active more active electromagnetically than they were now and maybe the fluid air and these things would have come into their own stone doesn't even matter i showed you a stone creating a charge earlier guys do you think stone matters because stone is crystalline by nature stone breathes stone sings stone talks stone is alive turn to stone you're coming home look at that guys that's not a tech that's decoration is it that's a tech it's clearly a tech. Look at this one. We've got the deities around it. This one's been badly blackened. Maybe they had a machine mishap. God, it doesn't definitely feels like an episode of the Twilight Zone doing Flat Earth British, but it's not, is it? It's, this is real stuff. This is out there. This is like unexplainable, unbelievable, mind blowing stuff that you're just like, what the fuck am I looking at? Ceilings, the temples, they look like super futuristic technology. Look at that one. Beautiful uh, geometry in that. And the symmetry, perfect symmetry. Ever decreasing inwards. Oh, thank you, Tara. And a little dancing baby. 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 I know. I know. So this is going to go deep, this subject. I just feel it. I just know I just cracked the surface. I know there's a lot more underneath. I just know it. So they got a light coming off this one, maybe in the modern day. Look at that one. So somebody's like chiseled these out, you know, how? Off of a scaffold. It must be back breaking. That one looks like it's been active recently, doesn't it, guys? That looks like a chunk of metal. There's a few bits burnt off. This looks 
blackened from like fire, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't that look like it's been active recently? And it's not center that metal bit there, is it? Which does definitely look like it's metal, doesn't it? I really do think maybe it's not teleporting, but it's part of the circuit board city. But these things, they're electrical, they're somatic, they're resonational, they are a tech. Look at that. And that's burnt on the end as well, isn't it? The power coming down like a beam. Step into that beam. Step out of a beam in another temple, a thousand miles away. I think they had that tech. I think nothing new under the sun. I think if they show you it on Star Trek, it's a thing. <laughs> I think it's Masonic pre-programming us, guys. I really do think a lot of stuff on Star Trek they're showing you is real. So, like a lot of it, like um, the, the mobile phone, you know, the flip phone that came real, um, the uh, tricorder, um, the thing that could replicate food, you know, all of this stuff, the microwave oven, they had it all on Star Trek, and all of this happened since. And like you know, William Shatner will Shatner will say, um, "Oh yeah, it was just really clever of Gene Roddenberry. It's not that he's a Freemason and knew all this stuff was going to be ruled out later on, and this is how you're going to do it." Space. The whole, there's a lot of stuff that got rolled out with Star Trek, guys. The space narrative, planets, aliens, all of that. Mind you, it was mad in the 50s on space films. So, yeah, that looks like le lace. Um, but that is carved out of stone. As mind-blowing as it might seem, it is, it is chisels out of stone, which is just mind-blowing to think. That one looks messed up. That one looks burnt. That one looks like it's been used recently. This one's good. Look at that one. Birds all the way around as well, that one. But again, it looks like um, there's one there. And that's not even connected. There's chain steel there. That's interesting. Why would they be there right next to it? There, there, four corners. And a chain, massive chain, to hold something underneath it, guys. That is amazing. I never noticed that until now. Okay, this one looks burnt. Again, with a lotus flower opening, which is another allegory another allegory four angels lotus flower opening the place where we live is the lotus flower again okay. oh look at that that's a nice bit of geometry going on there but they all share one similar thing the perfect symmetry somatic and they got this center bit which is called a vault thing kind of a voltometer something like that but it's got vault in the name this thing here has got a vault in the name if you google it I can't recall what it's called exactly, but vault something. Ceiling vault. And vaults as well, like vaults. You know, they have vaults over uh, under buildings, don't they? And that's the same word as electric electricity because they're vaulting. They are doing that. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. That is amazing. So, yeah, I think these are a technology. They got a one hanging off the beautiful ceiling of a chandelier maybe they should get only fools and horses to get that done if they ever need to del boy and rodders will sort that out no problem nobody will die everything will break but nobody will die so that one looks like a block looks a bit burnt there's a deities around it so yeah i've shown a load of these in the past but like not like these look at these again these around the outside look like they're like they could spin and they've got like edges on them Really weird that one. That looks like they drive the wheels, the spin in there, zzz, all of it. Maybe you're all one, all a stone. Look at that. I haven't seen that before. That's a repeat. And nice green. There's a Buddha. So I can imagine standing in here under these things. So there's a one that's just been pulled out. It's on the floor. But again, something's missing off the center bit. Stand in there, couldn't you? You could stand in there. There's another one. I definitely 100% think these are a some form of um, technology. So with the um, Indian depictions, I've got 892 people watching. That's fantastic. Please could you share this out? You don't want to miss all this. This is I got loads more to go. Okay, loads more to go. What you see with the uh, this is in uh, Rajasthan, but there's a few of them in different temples in India and in uh, Nepal in these depictions. I'm going to whip through them quite quickly because there's 
you know a few and i got a lot to get through but what it does show you is levitation a lot of people floating um these things that are cobras but you could think of them as a shell um, we think that the serpent or the dragon is actually the phoenician dolphin uh the phoenician whales if you like the phoenician dolphins that we see in old maps uh, we actually think that these are dragons i will show you why in this post later on another thing you get is giants in these uh, bas reliefs um, but the serpents is definitely an analogous for some sort of tech everything you see is but he's laying out and there's a lot of people up there just levitating and floating around which you see on christian images and alchemical images anyways a lot of people floating around here giants and a lot of people floating around now see this cat up here he's got like this thing underneath him and you see this a lot first i thought it was a pillow and he's just on it but you see him on that flying around like a mini vimana if you like you see it a lot in these depictions okay that one's been wetted and defaced from rain uh, but that's really old but really big and it's obviously a giant and another ceiling, this is an unusual one because it's made of legs and arms and body bits all circling. Uh, I don't know what to make of it exactly. It's just like body, it's not body parts. I think they're all full people, but they're all holding on to like one another's feet and could, making a circle. But again, four angels thing going on and a centre bit. Again, giants. And you see this wheel a lot, don't you? Okay, um, they're always topless as well, aren't they, in these uh, depictions? But it is hot in India, and I do dig that. So, But they don't go around all topless and naked in the modern day. So another thing that they don't do. So this one's been defaced. I'm wondering because if it was a dog or something. The baby's been defaced and the baby there um, and all this stuff. But this is a really old one, this is. But giants again. Looks like they're giants. <laughs> similarities between um, this is what i thought was the cushion but you see these he's on this like a flying carpet and later later on you see this in the air and he's still on it floating so you know i, I don't think this is a, a pillow and the but i think this is a an elect you know electromagnetic levitation device and um, but with it like we see like they're on top of these whatever they are um cats maybe lions i don't know but you know creatures um, you see the same in the Christian thing. You see the gods and underneath, usually with his foot on them, um, but always underneath the throne, you will see beasts. And you see the same in the Christian, Krishna and Christ narrative is very similar to Buddha as well. Buddha, Buddhism, it's not really a god. It's not God as a as an entity. But there is an all omnipresent presence. I feel it, but I can't see it. I know it's sure that which is what I experience. But again, like you get with the Christian ones, you get the deity and, you know, like it seems to be like some sort of um, oppression over people <laughs> because he's standing on a person or maybe a child again. And you see this a lot. And it's the way it's carved out as well. You, it looks like Puma Punko. This one looks like it's flying, but you get a lot of flying. And they do a lot of sex stuff as well, yeah, on these... Um, bash reliefs it's just you know like all a lot of these temples will have shagging stuff so. this one's lost the bottom half of his body but a crazy hat thing going on and i think is a giant maybe oh what's going on with that you like i don't even know don't even know too weird this is a nice one let's have a look at this is this rude yeah he's copying a feel Okay, another inch, mate, and you've got a bit nip. Doing all right there. You've got to do the old cinema routine, yeah? It's just like, which is next to you? Let me give you a tip, right? Yawn and stretch. And then your arm slips over a shoulder, okay? And you'll be in the right vicinity. Okay, you need lessons, God, Godage, Godhead, whatever you are. <sighs> anyway, let's have a look. Oh, these are dog heads. See, you get the dog heads, the same as the Christians. You get the dog heads. And they're coinciding with humans. He's got the tail as well, is he? No. Somebody's hiding behind his legs. 
It's interesting. There's a lot of clues in these, and it's very Phoenician. There's no doubt in my mind that this is supposed to be the older scriptures, isn't it? The way they're supposed to be like Sanskrit is what, 5,000 years old or something. They say something's melted that. I reckon someone came in with some sort of fascist weapon and went, oh, fuck that bitch. And just melted her face off because, like, literally, that looks melted. That looks melted. The bit behind her looks all blackened and burned, and her face is burnt off. Really, none of that, none of the rest of it is messed up. It really does look like someone zapped her head off or its head off. Yeah, why not? So I think this is someone giving birth. I'm, I'm unsure. Well, we'll have a look. So, I'm not sure. Maybe you can see something I can't. Figure eight. It's nice belts and uh that's arms isn't it and the top of somebody's body and that is as well okay two people crawling out with something too weird sorry my my head's not doing that one sorry it looks a bit like a willy too doesn't it when you look at it flat willy with a i don't know maybe not Whew, so let's have a look what's happening i love elephants elephants are the best aren't they just so beautiful cry when i feel i think of elephants i want to cry i don't know why just they're, they're that cool they never forget as well yeah so when they give you a flub on the head and you say i love you elephant next time you go to the zoo years later that elephant's gonna remember your cloth and say i liked you come here because elephants never forget now check out this one this one looks like it's melted this one looks like it's got an alien or maybe even a bee Maybe even a B because of the stripy bit here and this bulbous bit um, under the vault thing. So I'm wondering, you know, what the fuck happened? That's a really weird one, isn't it? Open for interpretation. Looks a bit like the faceless knight. It's got one eye. Um, but the meat, the the vault thing's just below him. So he's just, it's just like the whole thing's got splurged with heat. I'm undecided. It's weird. It's too weird. Okay, let's move on. Not sure what to make of that one. Okay. And that's a big piggage, isn't it? Yeah. That's not what a noise a pig makes. I'm not doing a pig. I'm doing a donkey. Oh, what's going on with that? It's biting a biting its its hands. That's really weird and and ghoulish. So these are the museums, some of that they've taken out, again, with the giants. And you see a lot of multi-handed Krishnas. I don't know what's going on with that cause outside of the, you know, outside of their interdimensionals. They're here all the time anyway, just we can't see them. they got all this high technological stuff going on. She's in a boat. And that's a, is that an oar? No. She's holding on to something that's got like um, a copper coil on the end. And that wheel there again, I've seen that loads. She's touching that wheel. Whoa, hang on. She got her hand on that wheel and she's on, I've got her other hand on this thing, which got a copper coil type thing on the bottom. It's technology, isn't it? Like high tech. So I'm sorry, that's, that's in India. I don't know what site, but it just looks so mind blowing. The world that went before us. That's not like Walmart, is it? Not like atmosphere and a million questions for you, Brian. He's got skulls for a necklace. And he's got heads. Oh, shit. What's going on here? Nice. Okay, he's got head. He's got head. So I'm guessing these are the bad ghosts. Get good ghosts and you get bad, bad spirits and good spirits in uh, Buddhism, don't you? And demons, jinn, archons. We know them. Because... We learn to know thy enemy and we learned about them and we learned how to fuck them off. And we're learning more and more by the day, which is why we're managing to tap in to all of these answers to questions that probably have never been asked in our times. Look at that, that turban there. It looks like dreadlocks as well. So you got going. That could be all dreadlocks. Probably is. In Natty Dread. And 
It looks like Venus de Milo is melded to the wall, like in the Philadelphia experiment, like literally in the wall. How is that possible? How is that possible? That she's just coming out of the wall in a bikini. Sorry, I have no explanation for how this, unless the statue has been carved out of the prominent of the wall. I can't imagine how that is even existing because it's a part of the wall. Wow. I don't know. Wow. My head. So let's have a look. There's so many clues. Sorry, I'm not sure what this stuff is. Looks like it might have been added. Uh, a giant and a load of smaller people. And you get the sort of a Janus, isn't it? But it gets more heads. It's like one or two or three. I think this is the interdimensional quality of these things. And I definitely think they are not far away. Dimensions is the Phoenician measurement. That's all it is. We just had such a lack of understanding. And the more we grip it and the more we get a sense of it, the only way you can get a sense of this, guys, is if you just forget about what they told you. Start a new, a new field of inquiry in your mind. OK, this is why we're able to like think ways that nobody's thought before. This is why original thought is so prevalent in flat earth British guys. Yeah, it's just it's as rare as rocking our shit because most of the Internet is repeating every fucker else. That's not what we find here, guys. OK, you find new ways of thinking that have probably never been thought before or have by them. And we never knew. But we're starting to look at that. Holy fuck. There seems to be a pot in there. But again, it's that lacy structure. I can see a little face up there. Wow, that's beautiful. It's all serpents intertwining. So she's doing a can-can. So many times are we seeing this wheel and this same thing in her hand with the copper coil thing on the end? What could that be? What would it do, the wheel? And the thing together. And you know another thing? Remember I said about them ceilings? Notice how many of these are in boxes, like in doorways, in portals. Notice how many. Like, almost all of them, guys, are in these things. And, like, they've got all this tech and stuff over there. I can't help thinking that these are portals. I'll show you some images of portals later from antiquity to try and show you what I mean. That's beautiful. That's beautiful too, the way it catches the light. Um, wang, yang, 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 yang. The, all of this looks like tech to me, like really advanced. I got my head around it. I'm getting, getting my head around it. Ooh, ooh, he's copying a feel. And he's got around a bit better. Oh, they're having a little bit of kissing there. Have they got tongues? Oh, that's wrong. He's got she got a head in her hand. Look, I just brought you a head. That's not what I said, love. <laughs> oh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Don't worry. Ah, uh, so they look a bit anguished. You should watch Flat Earth British. You look fucked off. Look at him. <laughs> anyway, so this one's got a bit mangled. You get all of these. All of this has been done by copper chisels in what's supposed to be the Bronze Age, actually, guys. Some of these, yeah, are supposed to be like um, 1,000, even 1,200 years old. I ain't even joking. They tell you that. She's crushed under a big shell. Yeah, but she was a bit shellfish. <sighs> so these now in my head, that looks like it's like um, of a Star Trek or some sort of um, science fiction thing where you beam in and out. She's got that thing over her head, this aura of light and the whole stance as well. It just like and you see some of them, they're standing on something as well. I definitely think it's portal thing going on and they're all in like, like I said, in a doorway. And doorways are portals. That's what they're called. There's that cushion again. And this one's definitely not um, on the floor. I really do think that they are levitational. What the hell is going on with his face? I think this is... Um... I can't remember. I can't remember. It begins with R, that one. Oh. They'll come to me. So, again, with this, like, suppression, isn't it? You've got, like, um, somebody underneath it, a bit like the queen and everything else that's going on in this country. Is you've got your ruler. she got big baggy hoop earrings. They're popular then, as in now. Uh, but, again, I know there's a bash relief, but they really are in some sort of, like, door or portal or portal. So, again, with the wheel, 
again with our thing with our on the end again like i said you're going to see it over and over it has to be a tech it's incredible how many have lost their faces isn't it and the bodies are still intact i wonder what's going on with that Ooh, sexy time let's have a look here well she doesn't want to look but she's facing the wall and she just couldn't help but touch herself so i don't know what's going on there he's got a plunger um i'm guessing that could have some <laughs> uh, some some sexual reference and i think he's got all the something there as well so well let's not ask what's going on with the plunge plunger guys okay because we don't want that in our heads do we but sex time okay oh well, these are these were getting up to sexy time i think that's a woman yeah her hair's all hanging down and i think there's a man <laughs> the bit snapped off there which is uh He's like, he's doing the, this is wicked sign, yeah, or tossing up the sixes. And somebody's opposite him with teeth. With teeth. How? <laughs> with teeth. Somebody's opposite him with teeth. And there's a hole out there, like something's blasted his head off and hit the wall. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. It, it come up this way. It hit his elbow, it hit his arm, it hit his head off and landed in a wall. Somebody's definitely done these deliberate. And somebody's like, oh, that's disgusting. It's jammed jammed inside her then. It's like, oh, let's, let's smash that up. All right, what else? What else we got going on? <laughs> oh my god, look at that. So. Jugs and um, I'm not sure if something leak, maybe some sort of water drainage or something. I don't even want to ask. Don't even want to ask what's going on with that. Maybe it's for monks. Ooh, sexy time again. So he's giving they get that's nice of them to help. <laughs> oh, all right. When he's playing. Ooh, 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 look at this. Okay. Sexy time. Okay. Now listen, if you are disgusted by this and you think I'm a blasphemer, yeah. You're right. Fuck it, I am. That's fun. That's fun. You can even see a bit of a bum there. Oh, come on. You're all, it's a long time dead. This is a wonderful life. Right. I could connect the electric. Let me pull it together. You might get electrocuted. No, you'll be fine. He's going to click that together with that, like they do in a modern day, and activate whatever that is in the serpent's garbage. Because that definitely looks like what he's doing is connecting wires. Okay. What's this here? It's an exos. This is an exoskeleton, guys. Look. Goes below there. Why would you do that except for strengthening you? Like they do in uh, like the last Matrix film. And that as well. It's an exoskeleton. Wow, guys. But nobody looked at these before and questioned these. This is fucking mental good. So that one looks like it's been definitely blitzed. Come on, guys. That's burned. Why would it be burned? Oh, fa thanks for Jax. Love you too. And thanks to all my community, my friends. Autodidactic Campbell, we love you. See, Bernie's in the house as well. India, love you, India. And Mac Trom and all the gang. And Liddy. Oh, you're all such precious people. I'm so glad that I'm alive to be able to be with you all at this time. And we all share this time together on a flat day night. Guys, we've made some magic happen here. This is the best thing going. There's shit everywhere else. Everyone's talking bollocks and thinking bollocks and doing bollocks. We're having fun. We're having real fun, guys. And we're having our minds blown. That's a giant. That's a big giant. He's got above him. Oh, hey, nanny, no, and a hey, nanny, no. Okay. Do you want to tell you a good word? Yes. Yes is a good word. Just say yes. But don't be a yes man. So, okay, we got a bit of um, drink my milk. -eth. Looks like a bit of bitty going on there. This one looks a little bit like... Um... <laughs> I was born in 1967, almost 1969. Yeah. So some things don't change. That's good, isn't it? Gosh, it really cheered me up that. I was happy anyway, but there you are. Let's cheer me up more. Oh, it's got a nice bum. Let's have a look at this. Loads of giants, a load of tech. This is not just ornamental. It even looks like some high convoluted tech. This one has been basically... Um, sheared off a building, but what you can see is gears. Something would sit in there and spin this around. 
whatever date he's there is not there anymore. And it's really unusual call image in the background. Look at that. What a shame. What a shame. So she's a bit blackened, but like the Phoenicians, beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. So much detail. Can't imagine how they produce this stuff. But um, apart from the incredible headwear, lace, jewels, gold, and everything she would have had, these things on her arms here, they got to be a tech. The mirror. Is that what it is? It's the same as the Phoenicians. Is it vanity? Or is this the Skype at the time? Because how many are we seeing at Phoenicians and, and now in the Vader? It's just the same thing. So he's happy, smiling. They're both smiling. They're happy. He's copying a field. But check what's behind him. That wheel thing again. I keep thinking it's like some sort of maybe holographic tech. That would be interesting. Oh, double wanks. Double wanks and somebody floating in the thing. <laughs> oh, you can see a little hole. Sorry, I don't make antiquity, guys. It was there already. I'm just discovering it. So I don't make this stuff. Yeah? I'm just happy to show it to you <laughs> to see what I can get away with on YouTube. <laughs> oh, come on. It's fun. Look, you get to see giants. And look at all them weird tattoos on this one. Yeah? That's brilliant. Look at that. What's going on there? Mammy, can I have some pocket money? Is what's going on there? Probably. Some things don't change. Ooh. What's that? It's a bone. No, I'm on about that. It's a bone, isn't it? It's like a dog bone or something. What's she got in her hand? It's a mirror thing again. Wicked hair going on. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Ball balls. Big ball balls. What's she doing with her head? So... Even though she existed a thousand years ago and is made of stone, she's still quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look what's going on here. No, I'm not sure about this one. This looks like um, a, this looks like a god with an elongated penal area. Difficult to say. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, I just, oh, I'm just gonna spend my entire existence touching myself on this bas relief. Because that's what it looks like it's going down. The, the belt is doing an old slipperoonie here. So, what's what's going on down there? Who's that? What's that? What's that? What's going on, guys? I know what's going on. Don't tell me. I'm just saying. No, that's just nuts, isn't it? Anyway. So, 900 people watching. Did you actually share this out? So I'm gonna, I, I will literally go on strike. I will literally come back and just start talking bollocks if you don't share this out. No, nah, I won't. But it'd be nice if you do. What's that, Laptus? Um, it was a, a Gurada. Thank you for that. You would know. Thank you, Laptus. And that's a beautiful horse. But look at that. This is one of those pods again. It's been carried on a back. And then a horse is on top of that, which is really weird. Because you'd get killed, wouldn't you, by a giant horse? We're looking so beautiful, though, that is. So little bit of kissing going on. So people were like doing love things back then. They were love. There was love going on. Look at the size of this one. Imagine the power off of that one. See, there's no way you'd make all of this with a lotus and all of this. And then just put that thing there on the side if it had nothing to do with it. If it wasn't a, if it wasn't a tech. Oh, I know. It's a brilliant design. It's just come out on my Brian. And I'm just going to add this little bit here now just because it looks nice. And all of these individual somatic patterns on the wall are fantastic. All of them. I bet you any money that's a language. I would love to get in there, write all of them down and find out which frequency they all were, play that frequency, and I bet it would activate that. Wow. I know you're thinking. I've got a vivid imagination, but I think that's true because I said it and it resonates. So... Well, what, what do we do, Lev? Well, look what the pit ponies are doing and just follow them. Okay. I think that's what's going on there. I don't know. Ugh. Okay, there's another giant going on here. Let's have a look. Okay. Now, like I said, these um, lotus pillows, okay, this guy with three heads, he's floating on it, guys. They do see a lot of them floating because uh, I think they're electromagnetic. That guy's a giant. They're fussing and farting him. Would you like me to massage your thigh, sire? Uh, yeah, you lazy bastard. You've got four pairs of hands and you don't do your own. That's what I'd say. Do your fucking own. That's what I would say. God or not, 
do you? Okay, no. So here's a Phoenician with two mermaids. What looks like a shell, but it's uh, serpents, or in this case, the Phoenician dragon, as you will see later on. Exactly the same as the Phoenician setup in the Christian faith. Exactly. There's no, it's just a little bit of a different take on it. I see the same crossovers in Mesoamerica with the um, Aztecs and the Maya. No. I really do see the Coloxy Quoxy cattle cult, the death cult, is all Phoenician. And it is anyway, because I've got a book stating this. So she looks a bit blackened. She looks a bit panther like. She has a beehive on her head. Would you argue with that? Beehive on her head. <coughs> And she's um, out of the water. Maybe she's a baby. Ah, ooh, Naga. Naga, that's what I was trying to remember. The Naga is, and you've got the double-headed Naga, and he's Naga, 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 and he's going to eat. A baby. He's going to eat a baby. He's going to eat something. Anyway, I think he's eating something in there. Difficult to say. But he's a giant. They do a lot of these loopy earrings. They're popular now, aren't they? You know, the baggy hoops. Baggy hoops. I'm not sure what creature that is. There's a lot of junk just left around. All right, let's spin through some of these. A lot of defacings. Again, that's interesting. Look, she... Whoa, 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 whoa. This one here has got, like, this pole. And on the end of the pole is a human. Or another one, half of one. Not sure, not sure, not sure. If you spot anything, there's a naga. There's a uh, eating humans again. Um, this thing here is a cable, electric cable. I don't think it's a, a, like a lizard appendage. He wears a clothes, so he hides, you know, things. He's, he's like, he's intelligent, so we've got language because he's got clothes. And these seem to be shitting themselves. She's like praying this uh, one in the um, in the cobra thing. She's like praying, please don't eat me. And this one's eating a girl. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, what's going on in this bash relief? Not too much. Just whiz through until we see something exciting. Oh, giant Buddhas are definitely exciting. He looks happy, don't he? He's got a triangle, like a, a sonic triangle, and a pair of nipples as well. Sonic uh, pyramid. All of that's been carved out, and the rest is blackened. So why would you put that behind there like that? Not actually expose it so you could see it because you're never going to be able to see all that in its entirety are you that's interesting what came first the chicken or the egg so a lot of people all entwined around a pole i've not seen that feature either and it looks like they might be doing stuff like sexy stuff like doing a bit of diving and um, I'm not sure what kind of horse that is. Could be a seahorse or a horse horse. I'm not sure. Ugh. And the many-handed Krishna. I've seen that once in a dream about 40 years ago, maybe. Yeah, 40 years ago. I've seen a Krishna in a dream with many-handed Krishna. I think I was on Magic Mushrooms. There's a dog head there. That no, was. E and like I said, look. Again, in these um, in these pods, in these doors, if you like, there's a pyramid above it. You've got all of this stuff above them. And they definitely look like um, beam me up Scotties, you know, them uh, transporter. Take them to the transporter room. Again, portal. Would you disagree? It's in a portal, isn't it? With all, like, stuff all around it. That's how they get in. It's like interdimensional portals. And there's three old sages or what have you there. That's an interesting little... Somebody laying down. So she's got people laying there. There's one laying there. She's got her head, hand on her head. So she looks like a grandmother, though. So I don't think there's anything sinister going on there. Whoa, that's trippy. Head missing. That one's got a thing to get rid of flies. And that's a strange foot, isn't it? Looks more like a hoof. Wow, so mind blowing. I'm glad I look into these things. I wouldn't know and wouldn't get my mind blown in such a manner. He's got a uh, trident and a cup in that hand and loads and loads of different hands. 
which would be really, really handy. Hence, hand. And again, I'm in another dog head, and it's a giant, and loads of smaller people. He's got the wheel, and he's got that thing with the copper cable on top. Just mind blowing. <clears throat> oh, do you mind if I have a squeeze? No, not at all. But she wouldn't talk like that. Like, ee -ee. And everyone else is watching, which is really weird. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know. It's like, oh, I feel all hot. I feel all hot and strange. Martin, why do you have to do this? Don't be embarrassed. You got here somehow, okay? I think your parents probably had sexual intercourse. I know you hate that thought, yeah, but they probably did. Otherwise, where the fuck did you come from? Oh, Cabbage Patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're definitely uh, mermaids going on there. Ah, the weirdness that is life. It's all weird anyway. Just got to fucking get on with it, haven't you? That's interesting. It's got like an eagle's head on there. But they seem to have done some uh, chiseling up with that door. But stairs going up and an eagle's head. And a plinth, which is really nicely mason reed. Looks like a red granite. Oh, that's an interesting little one, isn't it? Anyway, let's move on. Because I have so much to show. It is unbelievable. We're going to have a look at some antiquity and some antiqua tech. Now, I've got a couple of collections to whiz through. You laughing, Mo Samson? Yeah. It's not rude. It's art. It's, it's, this is the joys, the perks of being an alternative historian. Okay, as you get to look up Dash Release. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, let's look at um, Singapore. It used to be sort of British. Um, we had to leave in the war. You know, surrender to the bloody Japanese. Uh, 200,000 British soldiers had to give all of this cool shit up um, to the Japanese who fucking run amok over our Singapore, where the poor sing. Okay, but don't worry because the British got Raffles. Yeah, Raffles Hotel in Singapore, second to none. Okay. And what you find in Singapore is they got the best architecture. So what they call colonial, British, whatever. Well, they got a bit of St. Paul's Cathedral. But for Singapore, you know, it's just amazing architecture. And it's so Tatarian. Check it out. That looks more like Cuba than, you know, they got the same banks on the corners. Same everything as for the circuit board cities. Exactly the same. But it's in China. Look at that. That's China. I shit you not. That's China. That looks like America. That's China, guys. It's all mud flood windows as well. And the place is absolutely enormous. And I said, sing a poor. A place with a poor sing. So I, I can imagine you lot didn't build it. Because um, you haven't got shoes on, have you? Just run around all day. So they got window tax in Singapore as well. So Singapore was affected by the British window tax. So was Australia, um, Rio de Janeiro, um, Cuba, you name it, all suffered with window tax. Must have been one big levy for the whole world, if that was to be believed. Okay. Well, that's a nice big Tatarian building, technology at eight o'clock in the morning. Not many people around. India, you'd, uh, China, you'd expect a fucking billion people on the streets. Now that. Is in China, guys. You wouldn't believe it, would you? It's, it's Greco Romano, it's a British church there, and, but you've got the temple on the end. I don't know what that pole is. And I'm guessing that's the war memorial, a cenotaph. And they've got lots of fire on top, but that's pretty much the same anywhere in the world. Okay, for the fallen in that bloody uh, palaver in World War Two with. Bloody nightmare that they put the British and the uh, people in Singapore through. It's completely unreasonable behavior by the Japanese in World War II, if you don't want me saying, guys. There's two fasces either side of that door. You know, I don't want to bring up like the Burma Railway or anything, but I just did. So that's a nice bank on the corner. Very unreasonable behavior. Okay. And when the Queen went to Hirohito's birthday, oh, I was. I was spitting fucking nails. I was very, very angry when the Queen went to Hirohito's birthday. I was like, Hirohito, 
Oh, you're talking about that crazy fucker who killed shitloads of British prisoners on the railway of death. That Hirohito. You know, the one that got like probably 10 million people killed. That Hirohito. The one who ordered the Japanese troops into Manchuria and the raping of Nanking. That Hirohito. The Queen went to that Hirohito's funeral, guys. There's a skyscraper there. Wow, look at all the size of these buildings. It looks like, you know, Britain or Australia or mega cities, doesn't it? Rather than Singapore. But you do get this feel. The Mosquage. I don't know what's on the roof. The 1970s cars is a Hillman Imp there. Um, so I'm guessing that's communications stuff. No, not the 1970s. Well, I don't know, but they got a mosque, so they got some Muslims going on. And beautiful, look at that. So, whoa, look at that dome. Whoa, that looks like um, AWAC or something, you know, one of those um, arrays they get on battleships that sends out of, um, you know, a um, radar. It looks like one of those, them balls you see on a ship, the array. <laughs> whoa, it's beautiful. It's green, it's copper, it's tech. So they got like a uh, mosquages with minarets, could be landing platforms easily. <clears throat> and in contrast, St. Andrew's Cathedral in Singapore. That is in Singapore. No, not Igli Iglythorpe in Shropshire. I made that up, but not an English town. This is in, and it looks proper ancient as well. Oh, jury rigged. Oh, thank you so much. I don't want to fucking cry. Oh, that was fucking nice. And I am grateful, and I really do need it as well. Like I said, I'm not on the want. I'm on need. I might need to survive. Thank you so much. And Newton Street, Singapore. they got a station. Oh, I don't drink wine. There's coffee and a biff. I'm not really a doer at stuff. I spend most of my time doing this. That's weird. Most of that looks like it's missing. That's stumpy. Like it's fallen down inside that one. But again, an old English church in China. Look at the door. Well, it's not very ornamental like you get in, in uh, Britain, though. No. In uh, <coughs> our Gothic churches, it's plain and not much going on there. But it's a really nice church. The, I would say, because it's got all decoration on it, that this arch here or this doorway um, is being replaced. And that church is old. And I'd say that spire is older. There's a, a added on. I'd say that building was fucking ancient. Ancient Tataria. All of it. It's just crazy to think Singapore was this, like, British-looking place. Nowadays, it's all just a cacophony of skyscrapers and noise and shitty fucking pollution. There's Raffles Museum and Library. Wow. Again, affected by window tax. That just goes to show that it's British bullshit, that narrative for the window tax, guys. It can't be, because it can't be everywhere. Britain don't, you know, run fucking um, Cuba, for example, do they, in the past? So let's have a look at some images, and we're going to get on with some more antiquity in a minute. So I've got 861 of you still watching. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Nancy Jones. I appreciate you lot, too. Nothing, you know, this magic wouldn't be happening if you weren't there. That's the end of it, so. It's all of us together that make this experience special. All the love and the cool vibrations that you bring. Okay. Make Tataria great again, Lizzie Love. All the, you know, the, the feel, the atmosphere. And we know that this was good. We know this was goodness. We know that we're in the, you know, this realm we're in now. I don't think one of you would argue that, you know, it's satanic, you know, run. You know, the whole globe thing, you know, the lies, you know, the way they kill everybody, the attack on our senses. This is a completely evil realm, guys. And we know it. But we're not. So it's not all evil. So that's good. So I don't know what's happening with this picture, guys. It looks like it's been melted and they put a tower on it. I think that was an older existing building. Okay. That's been spludged by plasmidage. Ooh, let me have a look. Is it bigger? Ah, 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 don't you look. Oh, just a little peek. I'm just wondering. Ah, 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 ah. That's gay. Okay. Never look. So this is the portal I'm talking about. You can see all the deados all around there. 
and you get this swirling going in and it is in a mirror type of thing or in a frame and i really do think that this is the this is the portal i think when they tell you to go towards the light on death i think you should tell them to go fuck themselves because that's obviously exactly where you don't want to be i really do think that is not advisable if they tell you to do it don't do it in fact wherever they if they say go the other way or whatever way find another alternative don't do anything they tell you to do okay there's another way which way there's the fourth way there's no fourth way there is because i've just spoken into reality that will fuck them the satanic trinity that runs this place the phoenicians the catholic church religion full fucking stop is the devil the dragon the anti-god okay there's the beast the antichrist in the book of revelations 13 1 and 10 and the false prophet is the anti spirit the false prophet so there's two different characters in this game isn't there there's the antichrist the beast the antichrist and the false prophet somebody comes along and says i'm a good guy and i'm gonna sort everything out and everything will be fucking brilliant and then something will happen really bad later and everything will be smashed and everybody will be dead because that's what the devil wants. He wants to create bad energy, kill everybody. Got to leave a workforce, but it doesn't matter to them. Because if everyone's dead, you know what they're going to do, don't you? Bring in the next batch. That's right. Bring in the next batch. On with the show. Here's the batch. Uh, these are the ones you were looking for. Yeah, they're, they're them. They're them. Fucking chuck them over. I think this is the truth thing you get. So I tell us where they are, and I check aboard Masonic floors. Interesting. I think she's definitely dead, and they are massive. So I think maybe giants, and um, this like witch maybe, or somebody's come to the gate and he's offering her his children by the throat. The king, he's like, yeah, take these, fuck off, and leave me alone. In that image, I can't get a talk off this bong, Harold. No, you got to fucking do. You got your finger over the shotgun. Where's the shotgun? It's in the handle. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, can you bong while you're pole dancing? You can bong while you're pole dancing. Of course, you can't, you see. Because she's pole dancing, as you can see, and having a bong. As you do. It's so strong, it made her cry. Oh, I'm born again. I was just sitting in this bath with my two buddies watching me. Yeah. And then some angel came and just it hit me in the heart with a fiery love arrow. Shoot that poison arrow to my heart. Later on, I was to fall in love with the grapefruit. Oh, let's strip him. Who is he? He's the Messiah. Don't look in his face. Let's strip him down. Oh, Jesus. What? Oh, he's got a fanny. What you saying? That's you can't say that, Martin. You can't say Jesus has got fanny. That's not allowed. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that this depiction is saying that Jesus got a fanny. Well, I can't see any really. Is this why he's always got G string on in um on crosses and stuff? Is this blasphemy? Well, I get in trouble. Well, I burn in hell. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not fair, is it? I'm only making an observation, guys. Oh, I can't say nothing. Anyway, he's dogged in his woolly underpants with a couple of bells on his belt, so you know where he is. And he's captured at Garfunkel, a naked at Garfunkel with two penises. I've got a naked at Garfunkel with two penises for sale. Anybody? Any? For sale. Any takers? Squeal like a pig. Squeal like a pig. Wee! Eat Anyway. Oh, put your head back on, Pope. Put your head back on. Fuck me. Your transmission fluid is squirting everywhere, you dopey bastard robot. So in the past, they had um, popes who were robots, as you can see. See all the wires in there. You see? Not blood, not spy, holes. Transmission fluid, as you get, you know, in a robot. I'm guessing they have transmission fluid. Yeah, of course they do. Stupid. Anyway, here's another hairy man. He's like, yo, crops in. 
fucking smashing it. And I'm not sure what year that is. Um, I five eight squiggle squiggle blur something. I don't know. Okay, it's definitely Phoenician. There's a hairy guy again down there, and he's happy because he's got his he's got his greenage in. Oh. Oh, I've been a good Christian. Okay, everyone else is going to burn in hell because they've sold into the satanic state. But us good Christians, if you believe in Jesus, are going to be raptured. Well, that's good news. Um, Will we have to go naked, though? No, you can put clothes on. Oh, shit, we went naked because you lot were. Well, you will be naked when you get here. Why? Why, why is that? Well, it's something we haven't been telling you. Oh, fucking hell. What's it like in the other place? Oh, there's none of that weirdness going on. Right, I'll do that. Okay. So, we were born of water. We have Phoenician maidens. And there's the overhead heavenly hosts watching them before they get their kids off and get in the bath. So, basically, um, God's voyeurism. Ladies, you want to watch that. Think, next time you get in the shower, okay, and you're taking off your last bits, yeah, no, just know that God is watching you. Okay. <laughs> Going. <laughs> well, I would if I was a God. This is that. Uh, oh, right. Can anyone guess which road this is in London? Well, if you live in London, you're going to know exactly. It's Bayswater Road, isn't it? And there is the old days. I remember 1970s Bayswater Road. I really do. Because it's basically the M4 motorway, you know, you come from Cardiff, you end up on the Bayswater Road, it's the same fucking road. It's the same road as I'm practically on now, just like 169 miles away. So it's Hyde Park over there, and they're doing a load of artworks right the way along there on uh, Bayswater Road. It's a fire engine. It's a nice little bit of London there. Mort dead. So I wonder why they were keeping him in. You know, the stone's like, he's not going to lift the stone in his bed anyway. So what's all the raw tie for? Yeah, they say it was for werewolves and vampires or maybe stop you breaking in, nicking all his gold that they know he got buried with because he was Jewish or something. I oh, know he wouldn't be in one of them. But, you know, somebody rich. Because um, Jews bury themselves with their golds, don't they? Have you heard that? Yeah, they do. They bury themselves with the gold. Um, and face down as well. Face down. So I yeah, I don't know. Might, might not be true. You'd have to tell me. I heard it so they could use their asses as money boxes, but I don't think that's true. Ooh, she's pretty. I wonder what's running that light. See, all of that beautiful material. It's not lace, but I definitely think it's got some important thread in it. I think it's all about the thread. So, did you used to do the hula hoops? I'm good with the hula hoop. I'm good with all sorts of stuff. I used to box. So, we used to do... It's outside the Hammersmith Pally in London. I used to do um, boxing. So, I used to do good... I was good skipping. And um, I was good. They used to do hula, the hoop in boxing as well. Okay, so never gave all that. Okay. Uh, so this girl, yeah, I think she stuck some fags or something down a leotard. Can you see that? I know I noticed that, but I've got a keen eye. I noticed that. I'm a detective. I'm a history detective. I'm going to notice this stuff. I thought it might have been a penis, but it's not. It's something up there. She's keeping. Um, she just... She must. Have, she didn't get it down that way, so she must have tucked it up that way. If you know what I mean, it's a fax. It's a fax for later. So yeah, that's what they used to do in the past. Did you ever do that? Round your neck is good. So why didn't we carry on with these? No, I'm just saying. Why didn't it carry on with these? It's fucking fantastic. Why didn't we have monorails? Why do we need two rails when one is brilliant? And we could have had maglev trains. We could have had maglev trains in Britain. We could have had mnemonic trains. Why have we got? Um, Aviva trains. The shit. I want one of them. I want one of them. I want to go on one of them by tomorrow. Sort it out, British. Right, let's, I want to watch this for a little while because it makes me so happy. Yeah, this is the Mud Wizard. And a gift from the Mud Wizard from a couple of weeks ago showing you the power of Mud Wizard, mud Wizardry. Yeah. All of them are stuck forever. They all died there. Oh, yeah, they're still there. Their helmets is all that's left. They've been eaten by mud insects and worms and stuff. Whatever eats coppers. 
Oh, well, bleed now, mate. I got stinking cold. Oh, your nose is running like a tap. I got COVID. Where's your fucking mask? I don't wear one. Nobody's got a mask on. Oh, fucking hell, I'm so snotty. All of us are going to die. All of us are going to die of the cold. <laughs> oh, I hate it when your nose is dripping on a train. Right, Lugie in. Now, I've done this many times. This is something you practice on the top of a high building in Cardiff. Gabaldi heads are always good. And these Terabanuskis, they get bored, especially the tattooed one, is it, by the time it reaches him from a cloud, though, it should gain some connectic energy and turn him into minced meat. And so is the way of connected gob. But yeah, I'd be a brilliant aim. If I ever become an angel, just watch yourselves. Okay, because I could be dropping loogies on bad people's heads from above. And I would do that. Uh, Jesus, hang on a minute. I want a word about stuff. It's me, Martin. You know me. No, gee, no, stop. No. No, you don't want to talk to me, do you? Oh, you don't want to talk to me, face. Bew, bew, Bally McGrew, tap for dibble, croak, do, 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 do. You, if you're American, you're probably not knowing what I'm doing right now. Them words, they were, um, let's just say I was invoking holiness, okay, and divinity by the lyrics of Trumpton, okay, which was a British TV programme. We had Candlewick Green and we had Trumpton. This is Candlewick Green. Choo, choo, Pally McGrew. Tap for Dibble Grout. There's the town mayor, the town crier, and oh, they're going to fix the clock. Um, later, they have a riot. Everyone gets murdered. I'll show you the pictures of that later. It was really, really bad. In case you didn't know about. There it is. The riot of Candlewick Green. Oh, yeah. It was terrible. There was murder and mayhem. There's the desk. And McGrew, did you get any any positive um, feedback on what's happening? No, everyone's going to die. Okay. Looks like a day out in Cardiff City Centre. Looks like Friday night on rugby night. Looks like Manchester on a Friday. Oh, yeah. Ooh, got somebody on a beach buggy over there. Okay. So, wow. I missed that episode. I must have been watching MASH. Canterwick Green. And the riot of Canterbury Green. So you didn't know about that, did you? You learned something new every day on Fat Earth British. So the Casino de Paris. De Marie. Okay, what she got on? She's wearing some absolutely sweet fuck all, really, is she? It's really stupid. I think they look like vegetables or something. But she's got a titty hanging out, which is always a good thing. So check this out, right? Apart from he's looking really weird. He's a bloke. And there's a woman in the mirror, which I'm not sure how that is happening. Maybe you could. I think that is on his back because that's a mirror. Is it not a mirror? So it can't reflect that face wise because it would be in front of him here and he would be in the way. So that there is his back. Does that make sense? And there's his dress, you know, because he's got like a little dress on going on. And she's got the same dress. And that is the back of him. And he's got horns, by the way. And he's got the devil's beard, just like the goatee of the devil. Interesting. No shit. No shit. This is in Baltimore, in America land. And I definitely think that these two are different dates. But uh, what we got is the Eagle's Wings Open, Four Angels Tech, a full fashies. With a statue on top. Check the fashies. Um, but a doorway into somewhere. Um, I can't help thinking that this looks really old. And this looks a lot newer. Um, but And different style. Um, but this goes underground, probably. You can see the windows there and there. It's an underground Baltimore. And all your old buildings. In the port of Baltimore. The old port of Baltimore, which is probably very, very old. How to scam your local council, be a road builder. So um, Wales actually announced this week that it will be doing no more road repairs in Wales um, until somebody does something about climate change. Right. But we have got like this proper paedophile in charge. So that would make sense. 
Heights of Giants, whom we know of. And this was in an old newspaper in the 1800s. And this is ancient and modern. So in modern, they had um, eight foot four Fred, uh, Frederick Swede in Sweden. That's a convenient name for a Swede. <clears throat> in Finland, they had one seven, nearly eight feet tall. Uh, Germany, they had one eight, eight foot tall. In Cork, they had an 8.7 footer. Um, and in Peking, they had a 7.8 footer. So there was some proper giants around in 1880 there. Look, in Cork, it was 1806. Don't know what date's there. Uh, but they're the most ancient ones, aren't they? Goliath was 11 footer. The highest there was 30 foot. Uh, in Palermo, unknown. Why the fuck did you report it then? Oh, there's an unknown giant in Palermo. It was 30 feet high in the 15th century. Oh, great. Got any more details? No. Oh, that's useless. John Middleton. Okay, 1578, he was nine, nine foot high. And that's not even big. There's one year, 17 foot in Rouen. 11 foot are in Scotland, Funum, and 10 foot are there in uh, Galbara, in Romage, apparently. So they did have some documentation of giantages in the newspapers of the past. Okay. Looking for Mother's secret stash. I know where she hides it. I'm not going to tell you. Because I'm keeping it for me. And I wouldn't nick anyone's stash anyway. Because she's going to smoke. Just take a little bit. Don't nick a stash. A very merry four-way. Why? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. So who's involved in, involved in this four-way? We've got Jack Jones. Oh, God. Uh, Val Dorman. Oh, God. Oh, fucking Julie Andrews. All right, then. And who's that? Marion Anderson, are you sure that's not Jerry Lee Lewis? Good golly, Miss Marley. Job up, job. Okay. Ooh, dynamite soul Christmas. Grease your chimney. The clown, crown prince, prince of comedy, is sliding in. That's disgusting. That's what Santa does. Oh, it is X rated for fuck's sake. Comes in, gets pissed. I don't know what this is. Don't even ask. It might be real. It might be somebody who actually looks like that. Would you be alarmed? Don't ask. I don't know. You are, Grandma. Before you die, in the eyes of the Lord behind you, uh, drink this. Oh, thank you. Who are you? Don't worry. I'm Mother Superior. But you've got a hair too, like a vampire. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm Mother Superior. Drink. All will be well. I don't feel very well. <coughs> this is a possessed dog called Anna Beleski. Anna Beleski. Okay. And if you look at her too long, more than three seconds, yeah, she will eat your soul. Too late. Also this, he ate that kid's soul and he's going to eat your soul. This is the abominable bear of Siberia. He has no eyes. Look how scary that is. Yeah. Look how scared that little boy is. You eat your soul. I'm the master of my soul. So I'm not sure what's going on with this photograph, but something really weird and spooky. I would be surprised if they were dead looking in. Photograph of the dead looking at us. Like her. She's got tartan on. Oh, she's all right. There's nothing too sinister going on. It's a bit weird feeling when she looks like this. I don't know what's going on with that. <clears throat> but this is the most intense kid I think I've ever seen in my life. It gave me a shiver when I first seen him. What's he got the wisdom of a thousand years in his eyes, guys? Well, how old is he? Hmm? Is he 14? Maybe something? He's a kid. He's like a young teenager. And his eyes look like that. What you make of that, guys? I just can't work it out. It's got the eyes of just such wisdom. I don't even know. Maybe it is the shock of the camera. I don't know, but I don't know. It's just, his eyes just, it looks like you got the wisdom of a thousand years in it. She doesn't. Maybe she is in shock of the camera, but there's something going on with her eyes too. Very lucid, very lucid, both of them. Very weird and very lucid. Not as lucid as this lady's eyes. She hasn't even got any. <laughs> That's spooky, isn't it? Looks like she's got no eyes. 
Weird. That little kid looks a bit weird as well. He looks like Telly Savalas's brother. What's his name off of Cole Jack? <sighs> yeah, have you ever been down the woods and found this? No, not me. So um, she's obviously shouting for help. And she looks seriously like she's shouting for help. And somebody has taken this photograph, haven't they? And they're not really helping. So I'm getting the feeling that that guy who's taken the photograph or person that's taken the photograph has tied this woman to a tree. Um, he hasn't gagged her, so he wants her to shout for help because no one's going to hear because they're miles and miles away. What do you make of this photograph? I love my sister. Mummy doesn't like her very much. Yeah, I know. It's fucking spooky, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Mm. Thrust and Munch. Now, some of these exploitations for adverts for computer games in the past, they used women. I, I find this really, really um, brilliant marketing, is to use females to sell stuff because it works. It attracts you to the game. Can you remember Shark Attack? Yeah, it was shit, wasn't it? She remembers. Shack attack. Take a diver to lunch. <laughs> I'm a diver. I'll come to lunch. <laughs> What's for dinner? Pie. Oh, good. Oh, look at this. This is why America's so awesome. Yeah. Coming in. You're very welcome. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. God bless. Strike zone. And that American lady. Yeah. So, did you know um, their motorbike machines and these machines with the vibrating seats can give women orgasms? Are you aware of that? She might be. She's like, oh, I love it when it just gears up and vibrates violently every time. So, this is the, when you were an elite in the past, see? Yeah, table tennis, yeah? You get this, like, maid coming over that looks like that, which is highly unbelievable. And... You get to play Space Invaders, or in this case, table tennis, highly technological at the time. This guy, he's a billionaire, and that's his girlfriend. And this is the pinnacle of technology at the time. I used to play table uh, Space Invaders, but I've never had a game of table tennis because it's shit. Can you remember the Fonzie game? She can, yeah. Do you know how to play it? You don't use any money. You bang the machine and it comes on automatically. And you've got to make the font sound. Hey, do it now. Do the font sound. Hey, Fonzie. Okay, good. You're cool. You're cool as Fonzie. Okay, you're as cool as Fonzie. Don't ever forget that. So these are uh, hippies from London in the 1969 age. Okay, interesting clothes. Very, they look like they're in the hair bear bunch in the Wonderland Zoo. You do the things that you do. But what I noticed, it might be just me, is, you know that sign in the background? That looks like a woman's vagina to me. Does it to you? It might not be. I'm just saying it really, really does. Um, maybe it is. I don't know. So here's some more hippies. She's got the lace going on. My mother used to crochet um, hippie waistcoats and sell them to the hippie teachers at my school when I was little. My mother was a brilliant crochet. Oh, yeah, it is very much looking like a woman's thing now. I don't know, it might be just me. <laughs> Here's the hair bear bunch again. I like her yellow glasses. I used to have yellow glasses. Look at them looking at them. Oh, they're fucking disgusting. This is what I, I was in Dunkirk. I was in Dunkirk ducking Stuka bombers. And now look what we got. A load of bloody pufters is what we got now, isn't it? A load of bloody pufters. Look at them. That's what they thought. These lot turned up. Fucking hell. My mother was a bit of a hippie. Although she was into Soul and Motown. Ugh. Which a lot of hippies were. Nothing wrong with solo Motown. It's fantastic. Look at these for a pair of cacks. Yeah. Drop an acid and put them cacks on. And I like the blue, you know, makes the, the trousers stand out a lot more. 60s clothes are fantastic. I'm going to bring them back. I'm going to dump all this shit now. All these fucking Beyonce clothes. Yeah. Gang banging. Make sure your trousers are hanging off your ass. So you've got a prison. I'm going to get bum luck. Why don't you? Why do they do that? They're fucking stupid. Well, yeah. That's stupid. This is Eskimos G-strings. Eskimos, they're quite horny, you know, guys. They have, like, they look really nice, actually. They're, like, fluffy. You'd have to, like, you know, ask them if they got them on beforehand because you wouldn't know if they'd taken them off or not. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. 
So in case you never you ended up wondered what uh, Eskimos underpants look like, they're like that. And this is why there's so many little Eskimos running around in igloos. So this is in America. I've shown this before. But what you see is in these uh, depictions, I think they are from like late 1500s, is they're killing uh, wingless, but they are lizards. And they are what they call Dracunia, Dracuns. They're dragons. They're killing dragons. And they're putting them in caves. They're dragons. They're massive dragons. And they exist in at this period in the Americas. And you see the same dragons in these Phoenician depictions. And sometimes they are uh, dolphin type things or they are whale type things. We thought they were mechanical, but I definitely think they're dragons as well. The dragons, and they're a fiery dragons being burnt out with something like a fasces. Because the only way you can kill the dragons by battering them with a big club and firing them. Maybe that's why people get fired. You know, you're fired. And there's the dragon. The Chinese dragon looks like in Chinatown in London. I'm taken through doing their Chinese dragon stuff. God, Jesus Christ almighty. Do you have to blow that trumpet right next to my fucking head? Yeah, I want you to hear it. That's really fucking annoying. What are you after? Your balls. No, no, you can't have my balls. What are you going to do with them? What are going to be setting on? Oh, don't do that. And then to you, he's got the masks for all his different personifications because he's doing an act. Okay. But he's fairly protective over his balls, as you as you would be. And look at that. Imagine her blowing that trumpet straight in your head. I'd, I'd punch her back to fucking Heavensville. Right. This got sent in by a subscriber of mine who said something really interesting, and I'm going to share it with you now. So one of my subscribers had a dream in about 1976, 1977, and she drew a picture of her dream. And she swears that she says it wasn't a dream and it really happened. And she says that there must be a parallel universe going on because it's not happened because everything's carrying on. Nobody else can remember it. But when she told me, I, I swear I had a vague recollection of it. And it was this. She remembers one day in about 1976, 1977, stacks of red fiery comets flying over. And then something really bad happening. And she had the same thing. And I can vaguely fucking remember that, guys. I'm not sure how, but I can vaguely remember fuck tons of comets going over around that period when I was a kid. I can remember it. So when she said it, I was like, that's weird. Because I got like, it's really vague. You know, it's really deep, deep in there. But I definitely fucking resonated when she said it, guys. Isn't that weird? How do we even know? This was what happened in 1833, okay? In America, hundreds of thousands of shooting stars lasted the entire night. Hundreds of thousands of stars came down in 1833, lasted the entire night. Can you imagine witnessing that? Wow, indeed, Liddy. So Jesus is a levitator, like you see in the depictions of... Um, in the, Vir in, the Vida, in the Vida, he's got sparkles coming out of his hands. I don't know why. He's got a really strange look in his eyes. I don't know why. But what he is on is a device with these, and he is in a cloud, and he is above the ground because he is levitating on a device. Can you see that? And that's really similar to what we were witnessing on the Indian. They even had them, didn't they? Although not the Phoenicians on the end. And the eagle. This is fully Phoenician. So Jesus is on a levitating platform like technological, guys. It's not interesting. I want B to leave. I want B to stay. I want Panda to leave. You're fucking useless if you're even real. Have sex already. So, what time's battles then, Krish? 
don't know what you and think we should just hang around for a bit. I feel a bit fucking knackered. What time do we battle to? We battle for 10,000 culpers. How long is that? Oh, it's a long time. I've got fucking headache. Oh, I got a headache as well, Chris. I tell you what, Raj, should we go and have a bong and talk about this later? A bit of an amethyst. Yeah, all right. Well, I am feeling a bit blue. You're looking a bit blue. You're looking a bit anemic. Anyway, come on, Adjun. Let's go and uh, hold hands and skip off to have a bong. There you are. War's over. Peace has been made in eternity by fight of British is Martin between Krishna and Arjuna. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I know. I feel good too. She feels good. She feels like saying, fuck you. Actually, I think that's sign language. Can you see what she's saying in sign language? I don't know. So, curvature is there. Where's the curve? Where's the curve? So, pictures like that scream flat earth to me. It's like the way that the sun... They say this thing's bendy. Bendy water. That way and that way. Bendy that way and that way. Because wherever you are, you're supposed to be standing on top of a ball. And everything's supposed to be like literally falling away from you. Uh, but nobody ever, ever experiences anything like that in their reality. Because it's all made up bollocks, I'm afraid. Okay, there's a bike. And there's a chopper. No, that's a really unkind. She's beautiful. Did you know the bridge on Westminster Bridge, when the sun shines through them, can you see them shapes there? They shine the shape of a penis on the pavement in the mornings on Westminster Bridge. Probably didn't know that, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, they do it on purpose. So, yeah, I love a chopper. I didn't have one, no. But this is the 1960s. Wasn't it wonderful? Are you sorry you're not there? I am. So, does your car floor look like this? Have you been smoking cannabis? No, Ossifer. Honestly, I haven't. I feel stoned. Will you tickle my belly? I'm sure, I'm sure you've been smoking cannabis. It stinks in here. No, I haven't. It's just like, you know, my floor's got a few buds on it. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people's cars look exactly like that. <laughs> oh, you could have a spliff of the ones on the floor there. What's that Lizzie penis shape? Yeah, I noticed that. So this is not true for me because it would be jugs on the front bit. But actual image of the inside of my Brian. Okay. Don't be awkward. Self-talk. That's bollocks. I got the worst kind of OCDC thing whatever, ever. Because I'm like hyperactive. No, shut the fuck up. I'm sure you noticed. I'm told for three hours, guys. I'm not coming up for breath, guys. So that front bit on me would be tits. And women. Puns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a comic genius. Welsh comic genius. One of the best they had. Memes. Yeah, constantly thinking up good memes. Yeah. Um, your mother sex jelly babies in hell. Songs, lyrics, and movie quotes. I do movie quotes. Yeah. Make my day. Song lyrics. I do them all day, guys. I change song lyrics in my mind all day long. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got come on my tummy. I probably shouldn't have said that one. Forget I said that, okay? I won't even tell you the rest. 5,000 hypothetical arguments I'll never have. Okay, I got them. Uh, don't trip over stuff. That's a necessity. And righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Mm, that's not my Brian. My Brian's only got two compartments. Mud floods and antiqua tech. Uh, no, I got a weed, weed section. Food section. Fanny section. This is me. This is um, in Hamsmith High Street. Apparently, they've opened a coffee shop. Have they got a lock on that? Because I can't see a lock. You're telling me he leaves all of that coffee machine and that fridge overnight in London and nothing happens to it. I find that difficult to believe, yeah, because they're robbing bastards in London. You can't have anything. Just fucking rip everything off. Well, it's the same in every city, isn't it? Don't have a bike. Take that fucking bike. I would like a cup of coffee there. Next time I go to London, I'm not going to fucking all the way up there. Anyway, it's too far north. Anyway, cocking the Greeks. So what's that involve? Okay, bank box, fat bird, skinny bird, in the stocks. Okay, so that's what they used to do in the old days. Put people in stocks. Stocks and shares. I know. Uh, is this your boot, Valerie? Well, it does it look like my... Fucking boot, you donut. No, it's big, isn't it? Is this your boyfriend? Why, you think i got a 40-foot boyfriend? Are you jealous? 
No, obviously it's not my fucking boot. Where's your clothes? I, I don't really wear any. You're weird. What's going on with your hair anyway? Get away from me. That's the conversation there. So let's have a cry. Not really. Now, if anyone trans investigates and says to me, today of all days, the Raka Welsh is a fella, yeah, I'm going to tell you no, okay? Raka Welsh is not a fella. Raka Welsh is a woman and she died. She died 83 yesterday or today, today. Today, today, yesterday. When I was young, everything was compared to Raka Welsh or Anne Margaret. Everything, I mean. It's like, oh, she she looks like a bit of a Raka Welsh or, ooh, I wish she was like Raka Welsh or, oh, she don't have to look like Raka Welsh. Have you ever seen Dirty Dicks? It's an old pub in London called Dirty Dicks. Guess what you get in there? Yeah, you get a pub that hasn't been cleaned in 200 years. They have no cleaner for 200 years. Okay, so it's all of the mank. You can see that gun. Nobody's going to touch it. It's covered in mank because they've never had a cleaner. Okay, there's even dead dogs and cats hanging up in there because they haven't been cleaned in 200 years and they just leave them, put them up on a chain thing. That's ornamentation in dirty dicks. So what do you make of that? I know, I know. So back to the manorage, okay? According to researchers, before the Conak temple was destroyed by the Portuguese, pointing at a magnet on top, the iron idol of the sun god used to float in midair during the static arrangement of magnets. So just prior to the Portuguese uh, fucking this thing up, they had an iron idol, floating in midair due to the static arrangement of batteries. But I showed you all that already tonight as a reality. And it was a reality then. It's a reality now. They're not doing it. But we're going to fucking do it all. <clears throat> John Craven's News Round. If you're American, you probably don't know about John Craven. He used to read the news to children when I was in school. This is where we got all of our information. Yeah. He never told lies. I seen him once in Bristol Hippodrome. In um, a pantomime. He said higher. Okay, so you get bird now if you do this. You get done. You can't, you can't whistle to a bird anymore. To whistle was a compliment to women once upon a time. I remember whistling to women and getting big beaming smiles and stuff. It's not rude at all. It's like, it's a compliment. It's like, if you're not going to get a whistle, it's because you're fucking ugly and nobody's whistling at you. If you're whistling, it's like, oh, they find me attractive. I'm hard. It's a good thing, but they banned it, okay? I think unless you're gay. I think you can do gay with whistling. Uh, the floor at George Bush's Intercontinental Airport is the Asimov Equidistant Flat Earth Map with a tweet. But they put the tree over what looks like Texas. Um, they've got it in subsections, probably 33, like on the UN map. And it's Yasima for equidistant. No Antarctica on here because obviously Antarctica is not a thing. It doesn't exist as such. Intuition. When you don't know how you know. But you know you know. And you know you knew. And that's all you need to know. Which is exactly right. And I think it's all about memory with intuition. It's like you don't know how you know that's true. But you know it's true. Like I do with that net, with the lace tech now and the queen tech. I, I don't know. I know it's true. I just know it's true. So there was a mud flood recently in, um, I think it was the North Island of New Zealand, and it buried all these houses, like recently, that deep. So that's what your mud flood looks like. So they are real, they happen all the time. <laughs> mud pools, comes up in people's gardens occasionally. They have little mud volcanoes in their gardens. But that is the tube, three ladies on a tube train in the 1970s. I remember 1970s tubes. Very well. Can you remember them chairs? Yeah, can you remember them chairs? Can you remember them floors? Covered in fag dibbies and times change. People never used to talk to one another then on tube trains. It was always a weird thing. I do. I talk to everyone. I don't give a fuck. It's just tough shit on you. You're going to have to put up with me. I don't care. I'm going to talk and that's that. So, oh God, I've been talking three hours and I'm not even fucking halfway into it yet. Let me come back for a minute. Feel another vlog coming on. So, 817 of you still here. Wow. Okay. 
please, I've been going for three hours. I'm going to do half hour more. Okay, I'm going to do half hour more because I got a lot of juice. Please share this out. Like this video if you did. Okay, and I want to thank everyone who has become a member. Anyone who gave me supers, that's fantastic. Anyone who's bought me a cup of coffee, even fantastic. There's auto didactic in the chat. All of, uh, London man, much love to you, London man. Liddy, Pat, we'll give you a few shouts. I got stuff. Top notch, thank you. It is good. It's a very good one. I'm very pleased with this. Mars Dexter, social ripper. Um, you do well not to have comfort breaks in these streams. Yeah, no, I like to get on a roll. And comfort breaks, I don't get them. D, I'm comfortable anyway. I'm in an I don't give a fuck group of humans, humanity. Deanie, good to see you. K, good to see you. Face, red, heart shaped, Martin. Love you, K. Cancel, I can't fucking say that. Three fingers. In Myrtle Beach and Arian and Mr. Campbell Autodidactic. Autodidactic. Sherry Ives. Sherry. Hope you're happy. Sherry. Jersey Bob, who's my bro. And Dallas Fowler, Martin Baby. What's happening? Thank you for the link. I don't watch it. I don't watch hardly any videos. I haven't got time. Otherwise, I just think all this is just going to shit out of nowhere. And it's India. See you. And oi oi from Manage. Mass. And Mood. And Lapis, thank you for that earlier. That was really good. Person, turquoise waving. Epin. Nephrin. Epinephrin. <laughs> good one. <laughs> nice one. There's my brother, Spob. He's also a channel member. The Bee's Knees. <laughs> good one. See what you did there. See what you did there. And Pamela. Meow. Meow. Susie, you're getting it, Pamela. You're in the mood. You're cool. We're all cool, aren't we? This is the cool gang. Okay, let's get welcome to more juice otherwise. Is that Angela Baby Carson? Love your new little ratty, Angela. Really lovely. And your new t-shirts. Dose of reality t-shirts. Get a flat of British one. Get a flat thumb one. Get a flat thumb t-shirt and I'll get a pair of flat thumb underpants and um, maybe do a drawer or something to get you to you know, it's like a bit like fucking flat earth British fans only then, isn't it? We'll think of something anyway, all right, guys, to entertain you all. Mary Wills, maybe the men will have to turn turn their backs to the television for a bit. Brian Nosta! Pink. Good to see you. Pink salt. Love pink salt. That's what I have. Nancy Jones, uh, what kind of boat do you want? Well, um... Something about 27 foot, something like that. Something you could stay on. So a motorboat is nice. Great for having a fuck around in, but not practical. So something I could like stay on. And go far in to discover new lands. Because we're in training and as soon as the spring hits, uh, phew, we're going to be uh, getting a shot, showing you some long distance photography. Okay. Blowing that stupid globe shit out of the water not that you need to anyway because i've been dead fucking eight years now 12 brothers channel thank you for that i'm new to you oh this bill flip are you how you been bill howdy from omaha nebraska you're not in milwaukee yeah. i've seen your videos anyway jt and fala bless show thank you alba billy you are epic brother you are annie so i got some good mates in here all these years i got some people turning up guys and they've like being sub to me since like 2014 <laughs> or 2015. First, we're flat earth. Pranda, indigo wings. Pranda. Uh, so, got a lot of exciting stuff happening. Let me get back into some sharing some juice. I have got so much. So, do all those good things if you would, because I know it's going on, but everyone else does it in YouTube, land don't they? And it helps them. It's like self shouting, isn't it? So, Okay, let me just get that up a minute. I'm going to show you some more images. I've got a ton, actually, so I'll just have to wait for the next stuff um, in a day or two. Give me a second to bring them up because I have so much. I have actually videos to play as well of uh, brilliant videos, if I'm honest with you. Um, okay, now, this is brilliant. Oh, I've got so much shit. 
okay another half an hour or so if you do share this out please now oh, i like and we're gonna get back into the more juice this is good this is really good i forgot all about this <gasps> fucking hell how much juiciness in one fucking vlog okay hold on here we go again now so I've got a film there, Golden Gate Bridge, um, public uh, domain. I might show a bit of that towards the end, but it is like 10 minutes. I can't show it all, but it shows you uh, the Golden Gate International Exposition, the later one in 1939, 1940. Absolutely amazing. And um, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so um, a mate of mine, Dan, turned me on to, he said, have you seen about um, Con Fundum, which is a book about giant hybrids portals and lands outside Antarctica Wall. I was like, no, that sounds interesting. So I looked at her, and then these two ladies showed up, Tash and Bex, and they're British, and they were talking about all the stuff that we're talking about. And I'm like, well, they're not really in the community, and I haven't really seen them. So um, I made friends with them, and they're now my gang friends, and we're going to hook up and do a vlog live for you all. I know, don't be fucking jealous, guys. Come on, I'm happy. I'm really happy. Look how look how lovely they are. And they're clever and they're really funny. This one's got no tits on a mug. And the other one's got um wait, there. Hang on. This is how funny they are. They're just they're like me. They're just nutty. So she's got be kind. She's cross kinds out and her be a be a cunt. <laughs> and I have no tits. Uh... So I'm hooking up with them. So keep an eye on Flat British and you will see some content with them. Now. I got some pictures of the Eiffel Tower being built. I've got big problems now. Now I have. Remember I'd be mentioning the size problem with the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. There's two Eiffel Towers. That's not the same one. It's fucking tiny. They're right next to it. And it's really small. The scaffolding's only 40 foot high. If that. How have we got two Eiffel Towers? That's not the same one, because I'll tell you how I know, because I got photographs of four lanes of traffic and a park in the middle and sides, uh, roads and shops all the way under this. Do you think you could get four lanes of traffic under that? And a bit of grass in the middle and pavements and the other roads on the other side, the bicycle roads. It's massive underneath, guys. And the people are little tiny dots. Is that what you're seeing with that? It's not the same one, guys. I don't know what's going on. They put the, they, these are photographs, apparently. So it got built really early. So apparently they dug right down this deep. Okay. Interesting bit of stone there, I find. And this is the foundations, apparently, for the uprights. So for I, I can't believe how well documented the building of the Eiffel Tower actually is. It's quite monumental that they managed to cover it so well. They should have done the same with the IFS. So apparently these are the um, bastions to hold the metal, metal bits in place. And they are ladders going down there. So these are big chambers. I don't know what they do with them. So there's stuff underneath there. I don't know, but there's four of these big tanks and people inside them. So they're hollow and they're underneath the Eiffel Tower. What are they? Shelters? Um, ballast. Don't know. So they start to fix them things to the uh, stone that we just seen, the brick things. And then the elevation starts. That's not the same one. It's not the same Eiffel Tower. It can't be. And it looks like a desert underneath, which I find really weird for the centre of Paris. But up it goes. Gustav Eiffel's baby. And... It's really well documented, the building in the background's there already. We'll go through them a little bit quicker. So it's obviously a free energy tower, uh, but there is two because these people are right next to it and it's only by there. <gasps> oh, it almost turns my stomach to see that one. That is 100% not the same Eiffel Tower as there today. So can anyone explain that to me? Anyone doubt it with that photograph? Four lanes of traffic. <sighs> it's weird. So, yeah, they put all the tech in by you in a minute, above on this level. You're on the first level. Um, energy gathering tech. Oh, there is further away. Oh, really mint around by here, though. 
And these fountains, I uh, wonder what generates the water for them. Air pockets underneath, or in the case of Paris, are they using are they using the catacombs to filter water? Bones. Before they come through the fountains. And the same in Rome. Thought of that? Well, they would do it. Bones would filter. It's worth a thought, guys. It's worth a thought. So there she is, second level. They got a shed up there. So how big's a garden shed? It's not that big, is it? Well, it's like freaking 10% of that gantry, so it's not that big, is it? Yeah, I know. So they bought all of that there by cat. We've used the proof. All that. Oh, I don't know. 10,000 tons of metal, a million rivets to put this thing together. And the most complicated of things, spiral staircases. This man on the left here is Gustav Eiffel. And he's the guy responsible for giving America the gift of the Statue of Liberty. It was two, he built one, he was in Paris. And he was um, friends with um, the father of Isengard, Isengard Kingdom, Brunel, who was a Frenchman also. And Brunel was half French. So there it is, 1887, and it was that well documented, 1887 and 1888. So how long it took? October to ooh, April, is it? I don't know, December. Is that January? I don't know, I don't speak French. I know April is April. <laughs> oh, it's pretty much the same as English, isn't it? November, October. Oh, well, thank you, Peaceful. That's really kind. Love and love, love and love to you as well. Oh, very nice touching. So there you are. It's up. Let me just show you a little bit more. Look at that for a photograph. Look at that. So six lanes of traffic underneath this thing, because I don't think so. It looks tiny to me. But look at the kit. Still a, a hole in the ground there. You know, still a few things wrong, but there's your exposition. One of the best that ever was. All the tech on top of there. And obviously some sort of Tesla tower, isn't it? Some sort of energy gathering device. And it's not the only one. There's one in Blackpool. There was one in the Wirral, uh, which I actually had film of last week. And I meant to show you and I just didn't bring it back up. And I was quite deep buried in my in my thumbnails, in my bookmark. So it'd be a bit of an effort to bring that back up. So what do you think they've done with giant trees? Well, I'll tell you what they've done with some, is they built houses in them. Let me show you this. This is cool, actually. So these are tree stump houses. So this one's a cedar stump, all in America. Okay, and they give you the diameter, 22 feet in this case. People lived in them, and they look really cozy. I can imagine them being warm, because uh, wood is warm, isn't it? And probably nice in the summer as well, I would have thought. What do you think? I don't know. So skip through a few of these tree stump houses. So the tree would have been quite big. Look at the size of that trunk. So these are giant trees, aren't they? Look at that one. That would have been one tree. So how big was that tree? And that's in Vancouver. So some of these giant trees were lived in. It's like Hobbit world. It's just what? Tree stump houses I never heard of. Ah, oh, horses. Yeah. I love animals. Uh, as I'm getting older, I just love them all the more. I just think that it's just so cool. Getting a bit soft for animals as I'm getting old, apparently. Hmm. But they're much better than people. People like, you know, do that shit like they did two years ago, don't they? And they all just all cruel stuff. And they're spiteful. I went through school. Yeah. I know how cruel kids are. And believe you me, they loved to be try and be cruel to me. But I was smart. So it was a really stupid thing to do to pick on me. Will famous tree house believe it or not? Is that not beautiful? Can you imagine living in there? It's like a dream. I went into um when I was little, my mother took used to go out on a Sunday and she let me my said to me and my sister, go out and play in our meadow. Um there's there was like um just it was just all meadow and there was um, like a sewer pipe in there. I could imagine there was fairies in it and stuff, but I have a distinct memory of seeing, or we found, and my sister was there as well, a door 
in a tree and we opened it we went down a spiral staircase just like in alice in wonderland we were gone ages and when we come back we were gone two minutes so it was like gone for like ever and when we come back i'm sure she remembers but i couldn't really ask her she don't talk to me size of that for the tree giant trees that big can you imagine that it's a tree stump guys how big was the tree massive so oh, that's the first mcdonald's no it wasn't <laughs> mcdonald's post office that tree stub was 143 feet in circumference 143 feet in circumference guys it's a giant tree how high would that tree be 143 feet in circumference guys it's just mind-blowing to think crazy crazy big and these trees would have been massive so oh, I see what they've done there. They, they hollowed it out that way. Yeah, yeah, that's quite good as well. Tree stump houses. I don't know if you've seen them before. I haven't till this week. I thought they were pretty snaz and worth a share. And they're cute as well. And just a little window in there as well. I bet they're lovely inside. But you've got to be careful with your coal fire, your fire, obviously. You've got a wood burner because the thing's made of wood. You just have to be careful. Stump diner, <laughs> world famous stump house, redwood bill, and that's a, sort of a diner. It's not as a house though. That's lovely. Stump house there as well. That's the same one. Looks lovely. And world famous, believe it or not, tree stump house. And that's a redwood, Canadian redwood. But well, they're not just Canadian, are they? You get them in San Francisco, don't you? Oh, there's one there. I'd love to see a redwood. I've seen this loads of times, that one, with a tunnel cut away in it. See it in the movies as well, don't you? I think cars drive through there now. Yeah, that looks like a dinosaur. A dinosaur. Fucking giant bone. They say dinosaur bones, and really it's giants and dragons. But that looks like a bone there. <clears throat> yeah, There are no dinosaur bones anywhere in the world. <sighs> just look into the bone wars, and you will find that all of that is just a bullshit style to cover up the giants and the dragons and the other big, big creatures which are in this place is what i think well it is you can pr prove it just look into the bone wars wow that must be nice to go through there i've been through forests with like proper big trees but nothing like that i would really love to i always feel energized when i when i leave a forest the trees give you give you energy give you you, you, they love to be looked at as well. I notice trees respond. If you like looking at the tree lovingly, and I speak to trees, I talk to trees, and they respond back, and you just get like, like a high, like a trip, like a proper trip, just going in the forest alone. It's a fucking fantastic thing. Love trees. Anyway, more. They're really cool, aren't they? Right, cute shrooms. I love mushrooms. I do love mushrooms. I haven't got any, but I do love them. So here is um, a cute mushroom made from AI, but there's somebody who's into their mushrooms. And I think they're really cute and beautiful to look at, and I really love them. So, hello. Hi, Martin. You gonna have fun with me? Yes, please. Ah, oh, look at that cute mushroom. I cutch that. Looks like he's underwater. They all look cute and cutchable. Cutch is um, cuddle, if you don't know. You cuddle, cuddleable. That looks like it's got a bit of the... Uh, Praying mantis going on there. Ah, oh, that's a cute one. Ah, oh, mushroom. Ooh, ooh, mushrooms. So it's a nice little, nice little world of mushrooms. Ah, oh, look at mushroom man. He's lovely. So completely imaginary, but yeah. All of this is very real if you had enough mushrooms. <laughs> Whole world looks like this. <laughs> Cat <-oon. laughs> The world's gone cartoon again. What am I going to do? Anyway, I thought they were cute. Anyway, tree stump houses. What else have we looked at? I was going to show you this. I'm going to keep it again, right, guys? Um, Love all Poland, 1941. And it's the scene of... Um, you'd have to give me a vote because I don't know whether to show these. It's literally stomach churning. I don't want to end the vlog on it. Um, it's the scene of um, Ukrainian nationalists killed 4,000 Jews, raped publicly women, and, uh, you know, injured thousands of others. And it was captured on film. 
So it was not the Nazis, just to put things into perspective. It was Ukrainian nationals in the city of Lvov in Poland in 1941. These images are just too horrendous to show and it will play on your mind. So I'm not actually sure I, I should actually show them uh, right now. So I'm coming back um, for now because I think that is it. We're coming up to four hour mark, guys. I'm running out of steam. 762 are you still here? So thank you all that for soups. That was really lovely. Um, who's there? Um, Cassie. Oh, Jesse, excuse me. My sight's to shit. Okay, I haven't been able to watch chat, and I'm guessing you all had a good time. Han, love late night. Good for Han. Okay, peaceful. Thank you for that. So, have you enjoyed the, enjoyed the show so far? Have I given you any chance to have a brief? Have I given you any chance to catch up with your thoughts? No. So you can contemplate all this later. Three hours of juiciness, and I've only gone through a bit of it. There's plenty more left. I had a video of San Francisco, but we'll keep that for next. i got loads more for next, okay? Which I'll be back in a few days or so anyway. So I put a little video out Wednesday as a sort of filler in a really. I know it was just commentary on stupid fucking meteors, etc. But it's to keep everyone busy, keep it all ticking over, so I can uh, get some stuff together, like I've been researching all week like crazy, really, uh, to get to these results. Social Ripper. Campbell, we love you. Campbell, we do. Though you may be far away, we think of you. Dayton Ray and Angela. See, I, I told you I make up good song lyrics. My my song lyrics are always better. So, I got a pink skirt. Give me a wrench. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, oh, I did have a little bit of a... Oh, sorry. I had um, a little bit of a moderator reset because basically that's a religious maniacs coming at me i fucking don't know deleting comments and all of that and i just wondering if it was all fucking the mess of my uh hundred uh moderators that i have employed because if you look into my moderators i've got like a hundred i've got people in there i've got a clue who they are so i had a little go and a reset so i've been adding you all lately so if you are missing a wrench it's nothing pers personal i'm adding them as i go it's just I added loads of fucking people. I haven't got a clue who they are. Thank you, uh, Sikma, Philip, which is not really good, especially when a mess within such a scale. Julie, spirit levels, double flat firm spirit levels. I'm guessing you're flat earther by your name. I know you are. I see you around anyway. If you've seen you in staves only last night. Uh, Tara Payne, Brian Stavely, good working man, truth. Uh, he he's works as much as me because every time I see him, he's punching something out. And I tell you what, that's 24-7 work for what Brian Stately does, for truth. 24-7. And I know that because I do the same. Robert, we love you, India. We do. Though you may be not so far away, we think of you. Killed loads of poles in Galaga. Says Dayton. Dirth. Diesel. It's getting late, yeah. They send again up to midnight now, yeah. Three and a half hours, huh? Um, Bandera and those twats. That's a profound statement. Uh, tree three, tree 33, uh, two pillars, trees. That's interesting. Thank you for that, Alex. Yours comes out with chestnuts of golden wisdom. And that's Crafty Kim and Brian Baradabach. And Crypto Alchemist Shrooms, says Bernie Shrooms. And Jesse, give me a tenner for being happy with the chattage. Indigo. Indigo Kutch means cuddle or hide in place. You know that, don't you? You know that because you're Welsh, aren't you, Indigo? It's a great thing to be in here. I'm a mate earlier. I was talking to some Canada. He's like, you don't even know where Wales is. I was like, well, there's not that many of us, really. And we are like just a small, happy little nation. Think of Hobbit world. Think of magical people. I tell you what, we've had a fuck ton of amazing things, inventions, and famous people come out of Wales more than most big countries. We've had like you know, what have Argentina had? Fucking Maradona. What have we had? We've had Shirley Bassey. We've had Tom Jones. Mm -hmm. We've had Anthony Hopkins. We've had, um, ooh, fucking Richard Burton. Okay. All of these chicken Stevens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's probably not a good, uh, you know, thing to shout. But yeah. So we got a lot of cool shit from Wales. I can't say Tom Jones isn't good. Yeah. 
And um, if Nick, Nick Cage does watch, which I doubt anyway, but if he did, Nick Cage, don't be fucking slagging off the Welsh. Okay, you're not going to get away with that. There's not that many of us, but we can fucking uh, hear you, toss pot. He said um, Delilah was a shit song by Frank uh, by um, Tom Jones. Fuck him. What does he know? He's a fucking devil's bitch, isn't he? Fucking red right hand. He likes to cage anyway. Well, I do, but, you know, that doesn't matter. I prefer Grinder Man anyway. So, Steve, good to see you, Missy. Love you. And Cream, we love you too. Scott Poor, Avidas, and Jahuti, and and Ariane. And my brain is going like zinging noises now inside. That's because I keep talking. Polly, Tasmania still has forests like that. Yeah, man. Tasmania's proper still wild. Do you know who's famous from Tasmania? Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn is from Hobart. And I thought he was British, but he's not. He's from Hobart. Errol Flynn is a Taz man. Doesn't look like, does he? And he talks like British and everything, doesn't he? But no, he's a... It's not, is it? It's... Tasmania is his own country. It's not even Oz, is it? Yeah, it is a state of Oz. One man of all. Have you seen the redwood tree in Cardiff? Um, not that I recall, Brian. If it's in Butte Park, maybe. Uh, I'm here. Ah, uh, Monica. Epinephrine. <laughs> it's good, that, isn't it? Epinephrine. Makes me laugh, anyway. So, Ian. Matterleague7gmail.com. Said you wanted a word. And uh, or everything you need is down below in the description box. Anyway, links and email address. If you need to get in contact with me, if you need to buy a book, I'm going to send a couple of books out Monday. Uh, sign copies, and um, if you can buy a book on Amazon, which is in the link down below, and you can click my PayPal link and buy me coffee if you feel that I I'm worthy, if I deserve it. And Brian and Ryan soul family yeah i am the captain of my soul and i am and i can manifest a reality of what i need not what i want that's the better mentality and i think it's working navajo because i'm not really a needy person anyway really just i i can exist on air and love and i'm fine <laughs> so as long as, long as i can catch my rabbit you're the rabbit i know about that china and the first year of the rabbit was 1963 I found because my friend was born in 1963. I found out. Couple of lotions, got pools. So I'm running out of Brian now. Oh, there's Nathan. Good to see you, my brother. Much love to you. And somewhere in time, somewhere in time. It's not a song, but it sounds like it should be a song. I found it. I thought of loads of good band um, titles. I was thinking as well. Do you know um, Braveheart? The film Braveheart. Well, you know William Wallace. It's William Wallace. Wallace is Wallace. I'm wondering if they're giving us a clue with a Braveheart film. William Wallace is Wallace. Wallace is Wallace. I'm just saying it is. Liddy and Bill. It's sort of hippie shakeage. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for spending your time on your precious Saturday nights in your life. But I think it is special. You know, we're all. That's one thing we all got in common is we're all sharing this experience right now at exactly the same time, wherever we are on the realm at this moment in time. I'm pleased that I was born in this time, you know? You know, times like today, I know what what my purpose is. I really do. I was thinking it before the vlog. It's like, yeah, that's my purpose. That's what I'm supposed to be doing Yeah, I got it right. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. So many people waste their lives on just bullshit, not getting any anything real, you know? Truth is a good thing to um, aspire to. Truth is where it's at. You get a good feeling about that. Next is the Year of the Dragon. I didn't know that. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, I'm going to dive off. So do all the glorious things, share and everything else. Peace and love to you all. Thank you so, so much for being so fantastic and making this the best, in my mind, all of this and our friends on YouTube are the best thing on YouTube. We are, all of us. We're just fantastic. Oh, thank you. I do this proud. Oh, thank you, Bob. It was so kind. Good mate. Thank you. Uh, sharing the light on Saturday night. Well, I, I'm like, you know, my mother always said to me, and I stuck by it. She said, um, if you laugh, the world laughs with you. And if you cry, you cry alone. 
because my mother was a bit of a joker as well. And I always thought that. I thought, yeah, if you're always miserable and I no fucker wants to talk to you and nobody wants to bother you and you're only usually feeling sorry for yourself anyway, so that's all bollocks. So don't do any of that. Always keep, like, happy and upbeat and um, lucky. Just happy-go-lucky, and that's how I've been all my life. And I thank my mother for that, but I had it in me anyway. My hyperactivity demands that I should be on a buzz, yeah? I get goose pimples all the time. I'm like goose pimple master at the moment, which is a good thing, because that's grace of God. Grace of God, most high, which is thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cheech. That's all I can say is thank you to everything. The whole universe. Mo, much love, bruv. Brian. Tommy, good to see you. Thank you as well. Crypto Gator. That's nice. We win. We won. Just a matter of time now. Just all the bollocks. You can see how insane it's gone. It's a fucking joke. All of it is a joke. Anybody, any intelligent person can't even fucking be bothered. The whole rollout, all of their entertainment. You've just seen their entertainment. How pathetic it is. How piss poor it is. Who the fuck is watching that? It's back with people. Who's watching that, guys? It's fucking stupid. All of it. So, love you, you, love to Lawrence and Matt. Lawrence is not here, he's on his own. But I'll tell him that in the morning, little wing. I'm sure he'd be happy. We love that little wingage, Missy. And Sid, I said, mate, fat firm, Sid. Ashley. Oh, Ashley, sorry. Something just come up on my screen. Fucking stupid. Oh, thanks, uh, Angela. Like, share. Okay, I'm not doing absolutely anything now except for just clicking. Jan Oli, lovely to see you. There you are. So I hope you've got a nice little tickly belly in your feet, belly in your feet, feeling in your belly, because that is FEB love, shared by all. Hello, legs. I got them. That's why I eat so much. Go straight down to my legs. Matthew, Blazing B. Oh, you weren't the best, James Bond. It's your old man, George. Thank you as well. And Gigi Bob, who's an epic mate. Okay, you're all that fantastic. D'Angelo's in the house as well. Love the show as always. Thank you. Okay, great pimp ghost pimples. Ghost pimples. Oh, yeah, ghost pimples. I like that. Thank you. So that's probably what it means in the first place, Moved. Because goose pimples makes no sense. Oh, they do look pretty pimply when they're plucked, though. Maybe it's that. Namaste, Ashley. It's nice, isn't it? Okay, namaste as well for Monica. Um, glad to have caught you live. Oh, glad, glad you was your part and bringing your vibration. Hope you've had a good evening. Hope you had a giggle. Um, we've got a lot more to come on here, guys. There's a lot more to roll out. And this is just like just the tip of the iceberg of what we got coming. This is fucking madness. This is just the best. BB Lees, you knew already. Sharing you on Twitter in America. Thank you for that. Goosebumps. There you are. Okay. Much love to you guys. Thank you for being here. Make sure to share this and, and like this video if you did. Okay. Okay. Spread the word. Flat Earth British. Okay. Chicken skin is all part. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's like that, isn't it? It's horrible. Ugh. I can't touch it. Chuck, touch a dead chicken skin. I can't. It goes through me. I can't touch it. It's fucking nasty. It's dead, isn't it? It's like fucking. Oh, I just don't even want to talk about it. It's horrible. Anyway, come to your bath. Wales forever from Alicia. Come to your bath. It's what we love. We got a great Welsh conditions contingency in you. We're. We we rule. <laughs> Linda, good to see you. Martin rocks. I do. I'm a, I'm, I'm a rocker, not a mocker. Um, lots of love from Kildare. Ooh, we love Kildare. That's nice. My my I love Irish people. My son's half Irish. I mean, my, my wife was an Irish person from Stab City. Um, uh, but yeah, I got a, a like for the Irish. Don't know why. It's just inherent in me for some reason. I can't even work it out. We love you too, Flat Zuma, Effie Zuma. Thank you so much. Oh, you're also groovy. Okay. Yeah, bacon. Vivi Nurse, good to see you, my sweet nurse. Oh, I can, my eyesight's going. i got to go. I can't even read. Uh, Crypto Arcus is craving bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I do eat meat. I'm just not nuts on it. And I, I'm trying to, I cut down on food. Like I said, I can't fancy anything lately. I don't know what's the matter with me. It's just, all seems shit. I'm just cooking my own food and burning it. Um, 
fucking no it doesn't matter i had a dream last night it was fat anyway and i'm not gonna have that fuck that just give up food welsh and irish are both celtic well that's what it is dating them we're celtic and scottish as well celtic some people in cornwall are celtish we even got celts in uh, portugal and the basque region spain all are pretty similar people we all look alike as well we're a bit dark like this not the irish people they're all ginger <laughs> <laughs> well that's a bad thing that's really nice quite like gingers i'm magra my you, Madonna's got ginger and looks like a shit took a shit, so no, it's not all good ginger, yeah? Poo tube is asshole. Yeah, but we just, we fly above that, Campbell. It doesn't matter. They, it just doesn't matter. If they are wankers, that makes it better. That makes it better because we just show how fantastic we are. We're stamping all over YouTube and still being seen in the world. Let me tell you, I had a message off Lee earlier. He's, not, he's crazy on TikTok. I can't look at this. It's just stupid. But he, he goes through TikTok and he says that our subjects, Campbell, are smashing it on TikTok. There's birds like posh birds and office uniforms talking about window tax and, you know, fucking really like sort of them sort of people talking about Antiquitech. And not all like that. A lot of people are normal. But I'm just saying it's literally the, the mud flood to tire the Antiquitech subject is being crushed at the moment on TikTok is the word. So our our message, our our, our teachings, if you like, Campbell, are everywhere in the world. And we did that. How do you feel about that? Mm. Changing the world, my friend. We're changing the world. Yeah, have a look. It's everywhere. He sends me uh, the odd video and that, and it's just like just antique protector mad. It's just crazy. They're really on it over there. So it's it's big. It's big. Aerosmith, yeah, they're a good band, Lucas. Loving an elevator. Shagging in an elevator. That's the only lyric I know, actually. Giving it up when you're going down. I think that lead singer of um, of uh, Aerosmith's a bird. I know he's got that nice daughter, but I really think he's a bird. He's just like, he looks like a woman. He's got like lips like a woman. He looks like a woman. I'm just saying, sorry if you're really into Aerosmith, but he has got that dude looks like a lady song. I'm just saying, dude looks like a lady. He's talking. He's looking in the mirror. <laughs> oh, I blew my ashtray everywhere. What a mess. Anyway, I'm going. Double flat phone. Peace and love to you all. Much love. Uh, the Steve. Okay, I'm just talking. Okay, make sure to share. Oh, thank you, April. It's talking of April just now. That's oh, nice month. So, yeah, spring is coming. Daffodils are up. Keep your vibration. I don't listen to a fucking word. Forget all of the bullshit. Do not fear anything. There is nothing to fucking fear at all. Do you, you know that? Oh, good. And stay epic. And I'll be back to keep up the epi epicness very, very soon. Twerk it, Campbell. Twerk it. Twerk it, Campbell. Do a video of us twerking in front of a, in front of a cathedral. <laughs> Let's do that northern dancing, twerking. I'm good at it. I'm a wicked little dancer, me. I'll twerk. I'll twerk in Bundy's. I'll charge. It means money. Stop prostituting yourself on YouTube, mate. <laughs> Margaret Walter, much love to you. <laughs> I know we do have a giggle. This is the problem, isn't it? We just has a really proper laugh. It's like being with a gang of mates. And I'm, I'm, I'm freaking mad, isn't I? Uh, we're all a totals of another Flatter Day Night. They will, as long as you're happy. It's better than Friday, Saturday Night Live on the television. That was shit. Okay, I'm going. Flat thumbs. Love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And stay epic.